Remember, we're live. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk here. Pain has a face. Blank, pale, emotionless face. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I am Lucifer, the devil in the flesh. Power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! Have you checked the children? All right, welcome back to Nerdorama. Hey, guys. So... Here we're back. Here we're back for Nerdoween Volume Two. Oh yes, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, obviously. Thank you very much. Once again, Nerdorama brought to you by Anime Fix. That's right. We have um, a sponsor. That's one. That's right. That's one of many. One of many, or one of one. Uh, Anime Fix uh, is uh, is a sorry. Uh, I'm I am self engineering tonight. Mm, we are we are running the entire show from inside this room right here. See the screen right here We're running the show from that screen. Mm, so magic box. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Once again, we are brought to you by Anime Fix. Uh anything and everything you need for your anime needs, uh manga needs, import toy needs, please go please check out Anime Fix on Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, Florida. They also have a website, uh, animefix.com. They do a mail order service. And, uh, yeah, they're pretty awesome. I, uh, I love that place. I spend lots of money there on my, uh, on my Japanese nerdery. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Gotta so. love it, gotta love it. Gotta get all the mangas and mangoes and all that fun stuff. And he goes down again with this full mall. Mm. That's right. So we are <laughs> now running this, uh, little banner here for our call-ins. That way you can call into the show and tell us if we're good or not. That's right. Or if you love us. Please, please love us. Yes. But anyway, uh, welcome to Nerd Rama, episode two of Nerd O Ween. That's right. This is your host. Uh, I am Adam. And I'm Josh. And we are having a good time. I'm talking in my NPR voice. We I know, having, right? We are having a wonderful time, yes. Do you feel good up there, Neil? Yes, I feel very good right now. All right. Feeling yes. good about this. Anyway. <clears throat> wow, that was loud. Anyway. He's trying to be quiet now, I guess. Yeah, so we are going to be talking more about horror, uh, one of my near to dear dear subjects. So near it gets an entire month. That's right, mm. so near. It's and it's not, and it's also breast cancer month. Not breast cancer month, but breast cancer awareness month. So save uh, the boobies. That's right. Free, Grow your own. Free those boobies. Oh, that's yes. right. So um, <laughs> let's get started. Let's get the, let's get the news and stuff out of the way. Dun, dun, dun. That's news. right. Don't we have something new to do for the yes, news? Yes, we do have something new to do for the news. News to do's. News to do's? That's right. Is that, that a thing we're doing now? I don't know. Um, oh. So uh, let's start our news segment, shall we? Yeah, we shall. What, what are you... Is that magic? It is magic, yeah. If it works? It's, it's, it's magic that doesn't work half the time, but it's magic that works. So uh, let's try this again. Let's try our news segment. With the news! Mm. So that was that was our that was our little intro to the news section. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty neat. So yeah. do we okay. But uh Do you ev- do that by yourself? Yeah. And every time we do that we have to zoom back in. Back into Zoom. There hey we go. me again. Yeah, right. <laughs> um so uh it. first thing on the news, um mm-hmm. for comic book fans, this is a big thing for me. Oh yeah. Um I'm very excited about this. I wish I could put more money into it. Mm-hmm. David Fincher, one okay. of my favorite directors, aside from Social Network, and I won't go into that yeah, no, because okay. uh, that's a sore subject with most people I know. Um, David Fincher is tr- he started a Kickstarter mm-hmm. for uh, to uh, adapt uh, DC Comics uh, The Goon by Eric Powell, <laughs> the supernatural horror comedy, <laughs> fantastic. Just, just leave it a, a jackass not having a good day. <laughs> just, yeah, goes through it. You, you call these vampires these sparkly guys right here. I love the goon. I yeah, gotta say, I absolutely do too. It's 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 a it's just fresh horror comics. You yeah, know? 
It's it's kind of neat though. They're doing like a Kickstarter. I gotta say. Yeah, gotta and say it's 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 all CG and stuff. It looks it looks fantastic. You can go on their Kickstarter and look at the proof videos that they have. Yeah, they've already done like what is it up to like two thousand? Yeah, is that we can donate. Yeah, from like twenty to two thousand. Two thousand gets you a private screening with uh, with Fincher <laughs> and Powell. Um, just other, you're drooling over him, just like oh. right. Other other things get you like get you like a thank you or maybe or like a, an exclusive poster and stuff, but. I'd like to see this happen. Yeah, I really would. They, Who would like they, to see happen? Yeah, they really, they really did a good job making the CG look really good. And um, I don't know if you haven't read the Goon, if you don't know anything about the Goon, and you like campy stuff, uh, he's a, it's a, it's, it's kind of like a 1940s, you know. Yeah, it's a good throwback to it. I mean, I, I think we could just stop it at if you, if you haven't seen the Goon, if you haven't read the Goon, then you're a communist. And Ooh. you need to leave the country. So wow, that's 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 I'm harsh. Sorry, that's, that's tough but words for the you need goon. to go. Yeah, I mean you have to. I mean the goon's really good. Like there's nothing yeah, there's nothing like not good about that comic. Um, aside from if you I guess you have like a soul. I don't know. I don't. Know. If you really if you really which is like, strange for which is strange coming from uh, talking about the goon talking about souls and stuff. Yeah. And you you just gotta, you just gotta look at it like I mean if you really are out there and you're like oh I don't want to offend anybody ever then obviously the goon isn't your comic but right if you if you have a good sense of humor and you like sarcastic crap then just you know go pick up an issue of the goon any issue really I can't just like point out one and be like that's the one you start with that's the one that'll get you in you just pick up any any the newest issue the oldest issue anything any, every issue of the goon is just good you're right oh, and uh, speaking of David Fincher uh oh um, segues yes yeah, more segues. <laughs> Uh, he is going to be directing the uh, Halo 4 launch trailer for <laughs> all those Halo fans out there, which I'm sorry. I love that that warrants like a, a actual name, like a good director. Yeah, it's just for, like, for hey. a launch trailer, not yeah. even not even like, <laughs> not like, like, even like their, their premiere trailer, not their IGN, like what they're going to be playing on everything. No, it's, a, it's like, hey, this is our teaser trailer for cons. We need a, a top name, big, big like billing director, especially for like a a game that people looked at and weren't sure that it was gonna be Halo Four. They thought it was gonna be like Marathon relaunched or yeah. something like that because everyone was like, "Oh, the planet that he ends up in Halo Three is that's Marathon." It's just like it's like this is the game that people kind of wanted to happen but wouldn't should never have happened, and yeah. it's getting like its own like official launch trailer. It's gonna be all nice and like probably gonna have real people in it, not just like a uh, CG or anything of that sort. Like they. They're really trying to pull out all the budget and go crazy for it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it. I don't. I just don't know what to say about it. It's. It's just. A, it's a launch trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know about that. Um. Uh, un unrelated news. Unrelated. Uh, what do we have here? They. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of this. I'm, every everyone everyone <laughs> at home gets to watch this. Um, it's not as gross as as it sounds, but uh, they are calling. They are calling this the Lovecraftian eye. Is that a vagina? Uh, no, it is an it is an actual eye that is washed up that 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 washed up on shore. Um, yes, it's the eye of some sort of creature, but it is so huge that they don't know what to do with. They don't know what to call it. So um, it's obviously Nessie's eye. Uh, it you is, can you can clearly see from the. Uh, it is pretty damn big. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it belongs to Dagon. Take on or uh, it's a washed up Bigfoot. It's a it's a it's a deep one eye. It's really uh, it's really creepy. Yeah, it's really creepy. So it, like, uh, oh my god, you can see my feet. Hey guys, my foot. Yeah. Hello, my darling. I don't Hello, like that. Baby. I, don't, I don't like that. We have to zoom every time. But that's rough. Yeah. Oh, it's what happens when you run your own show. That's right. We are it's, doing this. We are doing this live. Screw. We're doing it live. That's right. Uh, uh, speaking of the end of the world. Ha ha ha. You're just. I segued once again. All cons. Um, we uh, Edgar Wright is making a third movie in his um, in his Blood and Ice Cream trilogy that started, you know, with Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, went into Hot Fuzz. Yeah. Now he's doing a post. Well, not a post apocalypse. He's doing a pot and an apocalyptic movie. Um, it's he called. Just, he loves money. I think yeah, that's what it is. Now. I know, but his movies are so damn good. They are good. It's just you look at it and you're like, you're like, okay, uh, get the usual guys around. We're gonna dress them up in new costumes. And here's the the other well written theme. You're well, like, he okay. He, well, he did Scott Pilgrim without without either uh, Nick Frost or uh, Simon Pegg, and it was oh, a yeah. fantastic film. Oh no, Scott Pilgrim is amazing. I yeah, freaking love that movie. So he's so, doing this. He's doing this movie. Whoa, I can't get it up there. Get a he's doing that thingy. I'm, oh, I'm just, watching this I, already. I, yeah. He's doing this movie called uh, uh, At World's End. Mm. Um, it's a uh, it's about these it's about these two guys that are doing this pub crawl in London, mm -hmm. and uh, the world is ending around them. Kind of like kind of like in the Shaun of the Dead tradition, where they have no idea what's going on. Uh, they're oblivious to the world, but uh, that's lovely. Yeah, 
it might it, it's gonna be fun. Um, I hear there's an there's another uh, end of the world movie coming around around the same. Oh yeah, no, vein. I, I heard about it. it was <laughs> actually a, a friend of mine. Um, she was telling me about it that there's gonna be a uh, James Franco like barbecue like the entire premise is supposed to be like a POV movie, and it's ever like all these big names like you would never expect like. Like, I think it's, like, uh, Aziz Ansari, James Franco. Like, I think we had the IMDB up, and I was trying to list off some of them. And the list oh, just yeah, goes, Jason like... Jason Segel. Yeah, everybody. And they're just jumping in on it, and the, literally the premise is just everyone goes over to Franco's house for a uh, barbecue grill or, like, a birthday party or something like that, and then a zombie apocalypse happens. And it's all first person, just all these big-name celebrities <coughs> as themselves. That's the weirdest thing. It's not like... It's not like... Oh, Aziz Ansari so as like Bob Jake. Huh? No, it's, it's yeah, it's a little like James Franco as James Franco. Wow. Aziz Ansari as Aziz Ansari. Rumored. And you're like, okay. It's like Jason, Jason Siegel as Jason Siegel. <laughs> Jason like, Siegel. You're like, oh, 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 my words, my letters. Yes. But no, yeah, um, it's a, it's apparently like the next Apocalypse movie. That's why I was laughing a little bit when we were going over the news and it was like, it was like, oh, what's that? What's that thing? Oh, it's an Apocalypse movie. I'm like, what about the other one they're doing that has like the exact same name only with like James Franco in front of it? So weird. It's just like the, the weirdest thing you can think of at this time. I don't know. It's just it's it's one of those movies that I think you're gonna you're gonna sell tickets because it's another like it's like the Incredibles. It's just or not the Incredibles out uh, the in- Expendables. Expendables. Okay. Yeah. It was just like it's like you have to see it because it's like oh and it's, here he it's, is Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's the Expendables <laughs> of stoner comedy people. It really is. You just look at it and you're like you're like okay so who's in it? Everybody that you care about. Do you see the Muppets? <laughs> y- y- yeah. Do you see say it? yeah yeah I saw that. Pineapple Express, yeah, yeah, you need to go see this movie. Your Highness, yeah, Your Highness. It's like, like, uh, okay, I guess I go see this movie then. Like, same thing. It's just like, it's like it's got Schwarzenegger, it's got uh, everybody in it. You just go, okay, I guess I go take my money. Just here you go, thank you. Okay, I pay for three D. Okay. Do you pay for three D? I do. I can't help it. I had to see like Judge Dredd in three D. I had to. It yeah, was the, it was in the name. I seen. Uh, I saw Avatar three D, but the, actually, I saw Avatar three D not in the um, not in the normal way. I saw it, uh, my... I don't want to know. No, I was like, oh, yeah, I went to this back alley, and this guy was like, you want to see an avatar? And I was like, yeah. He's like, close your eyes. And wow. we put on Fern Gully. Um, what? <laughs> no, um, no, I, my, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's like my ex-stepfather's... No, that's easy to say. Um, he, uh, he redid my room when I moved out from that actual household. He right. turned it into, like, a theater, went out to, like, eBay, got his own, like, seats, like, box office, like, full-on, like, rumble seats and everything. Like it actually looks like a movie My theater God. in there and he has like a projection that goes on the wall. It's all HD and has like the tarp and everything like his own little retro popcorn machine. I'm like, wow, you really just wanted me out so you could get that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but no, yeah, we went, we went over and it was kind of like, we were still on good terms with them. So, uh, we went and saw Avatar, uh, in there and it was like in 3d, perfect picture, HD, everything was beautiful. It was just like one of those weird occurrences where you're like, Hey, that's, that's a way to see a movie, I guess. Yeah. Didn't cost me a thing. It cost uh, my my mom just her going. Uh, I have to be near this guy again. <laughs> but she she likes him, so it's a, it's kind of neat. It's kind of one of those weird things. That's cool. Yeah. What else we got here? Uh, well, something from my childhood. Oh, I know, God. I know, I'm like ancient, but uh, it's back like, when I was a kid, eighty four for you kids playing at home. Back 84. when I was a kid, I was. Wow. Yeah. No. no. Eighty four. It's canon now. I've said it. Okay. It's, all, it's live. Back when I was a child, <laughs> back back when dinosaurs ruled the earth, uh, there was this TV show that was also a toy tie-in mm-hmm. um, that uh, had these spaceships and stuff that you shot at the screen, and they shot back, and it never worked. It was called Captain Power. I know people out there remember Captain Power. Uh, it had the folks some, that invented the wheel remember. Yeah, it was real terrible graphics and stuff, and I absolutely fell in love with it as a kid because mm-hmm. it was just... It was awful. It was live action. It was sci-fi. It was just, I don't know, being a kid and liking terrible things is is, is what I grew up to be a, an adult to like terrible things. But yeah. uh, it's it's coming back. Um, really? Yeah. It's being called Phoenix Rising. What's going to, it's like the same thing. They're going to be like, hey kids, buy these toys and the people on the TV will shoot back at you just like Duck Hunt. Like, I don't know. I mean, it, it all they did is showed a symbol for Phoenix Rising and, and it's the same, it's the Captain Power symbol. So oh, really? hopefully, Maybe hopefully just, it's, that might be really cool. It's I don't something know. completely different. It was just, they yeah. were looking through symbols and like, no, nah, that looks crappy. And the copyright yeah. lapsed on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So they're like, <laughs> they're like, oh, like, this looks cool. Put this oh, on there. Thing. I just want, I want that to happen like a Marvel comic, just like the Spider-Man symbol or something, just like completely come out of copyright. Someone forgets it. They're asleep on the job one day. And you're just like, you're like, Captain Webb's a lot. <laughs> like, you're like, who's that? Is that a new Marvel guy? But like, 
No, no, that's a new company. That's Dark Horse Comics. They're that's, doing they're doing Spider Man now. That's <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Spider Man. Oh god, you, really? You, you walked right into that so good. No, segue. no, really? Yeah, they um they're they're casting for oh, they casted me. for uh for the Amazing Spider Man two. Um, they're actually going for the actual uh, storyline where uh, I believe Gwen Stacy will die and uh, Mary Jane comes back in because they they uh, they casted a uh, I don't know her name Shaleen Woodley did I say it right and um, people yeah yeah Shaleen probably people out there I mean, this is this is what she looks like uh, oh, moment, momentarily oh 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 oh, oh yeah, that's her. style yeah that's right she's so, like all of twelve yeah she was in uh, that movie The Descendants the George Clooney movie that uh, that should have won Oscars but didn't it's a George Clooney movie though so it has George Clooney so it's already won things in my heart yeah that's right so um. Yeah, so she's gonna be Mary Jane. She looks very fat in our stream. Yeah, no, she's she's all squished in the stream. <laughs> she's she's Mary Kate Jane Watson. She's gonna spend half the movie eating tacos and burritos <laughs> and talking how she has a Jennifer Lopez. And she's already better than what's her face, uh, Ooh, Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst. Well, that's I mean, I mean, she didn't even have to act to be better than that's that. That's not that hard. So, I mean, so, oh yeah, we're back to being mm, unzoomed mm, again. Mm, oh my God, <laughs> okay, so, we're back. Anyway, back to uh, seriousness. Mm. Oh. Okay, you're not uh, used to this. No, this is a Mac, folks. It's not. It doesn't. It has lots of kinks. Yeah, uh, none Mac, of them are kinky. This, this Mac is not just, kinky. Just uh, anyway. Uh, um, and uh, and uh, something I don't want to talk about, but I have to. Okay. Um, the 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 sequel to uh uh Taken. Uh, you mean the credits, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Taken two is still number one in the box office. <laughs> uh, which means that there was nothing <laughs> slitting my wrist now. Yes, thank you. That means there was nothing worth watching out there. Um, <laughs> but because of that, oh, uh, take, I know people that want to see that movie. <laughs> take it, I'm sorry. Taken three has already been greenlit, so go what? ahead. And, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I, just, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's maybe going to steal his unborn fetus. Wait, I just, I want to, I want to meet the team of writers. Just sit with them. Just walk in. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, plop down, have my coffee, my my big thing of Munchkins from Dunkin' Donuts, and just be like. So, I watched Taken 1, you got my money twice, because I bought the DVD, I actually bought it, and I went and saw it in theaters, and you, you convinced me that this man had a particular set of skills, skills that would make him integral in keeping his family safe, and uh, you, let him, you let his daughter get kidnapped again, his family's in danger again in Taken 2. Yeah, yeah, it seems like a good idea. Maybe okay, he- cool, and I just want to like, get back up, leave, be like, have a great day, take my flight back to Florida, go, okay. See Taken 3, fly all the way back, go, so he let it up again. He failed his family once again. He has a wife's severed head on his bed. Well, just really, I, think, I think really I want them to do, what I want them to do is just be like, here's Taken 3. And as it goes out, the letters just start fading out and fading out and rearranging. And it's like, Max Payne 4. And I'll just be like, yes! It's exactly what I wanted a movie adaptation of. Because it's literally all it is. It's just him running around with a pistol just murdering people for no reason. I just need him to start chugging painkillers. not, pain, not pain bullet killers. time, yeah. No, no. Just, as soon as he starts eating painkillers, that's going to be it. It's just going right. to be like, like, oh, mom, 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 It's just be like, you're not going to touch my daughter anymore. By the, by the way, if you have something to say about Taken, if you want to defend it or trash it, you know, you can give us a call at 727-493-2055. That is... Seven two seven four nine three two zero five five. Call as free as you're if you're local. That's right. It, if and if you're not, Skype us. Then you won't have to pay anything. Because Skype doesn't like money, no. <laughs> and we're exploiting it. That's right. Uh, we're don't tell Skype. Don't tell Skype. Uh, anyway, so that that was our news and rumors. News and rumors with Adam. That's right. So let's let's jump into our nerdoween. I, I can't do that. That movie is bad too. What, a jump? Jumper. Oh, I love that movie. No way. Yeah, it was great. The coolest thing about that was the fight with the British guy. That was all that was mattered. But like uh, Samuel Jackson just run around and be like, I got this shock lance that shuts down all these cool mega human powers. You're just like, really? Like, but yeah, the, 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 the super the, prepared. The idea of, of the Templars still being around and like still trying to regulate know. You want, everything. You want a story where the Templars are still around? You go, you go watch the movie that is Assassin's Creed. Yeah. By movie, I mean game. And by game, I mean your counter button. And that's it. And you just watch the rest of the movie. It's a great movie. They talk about Templars, assassins, evil George Washington. You got all your bases covered, kids. You 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 want Templars in a movie? You go see Assassin's Creed. You don't need to go see Jumper. 
Okay, that's a, it's a no, 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 no. Speaking of video games, oh goodness, what do we got now? You did this. Uh, really? I, I understand Stop that, that. I understand that you uh, you have got the uh, the new. You, well, you've played the new Resident Evil Six. <laughs> yeah, we can't say got anymore. I returned the yes. thing quicker than a hot bun. Um, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. let I'm gonna let you talk about this. Uh, I have oh, to God. make some I have to make some tweaks on our on our recording here. So uh, oh goodness, I don't uh, want to. I don't want to. You can leave me all alone. You're, you're gonna be alone for just a, one minute. This scares and confuses so, me. Let's let's go into uh, let's go into Resident Evil Six. Resident Evil Six. Oh God. Okay. Let me just. I'll, I'll take center stage. I guess. Mm. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe Adam. Nope. Nope. He's crawling on the ground like a munchkin. Nope. There he goes. There he goes. Out the door. Okie dokie. All right. Then let me just. Uh, da, 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 da. This has never happened before. I'm very awkward. I don't know what to do by myself. Do I just no? Yes. Maybe. Ooh. Better. Uh. No. Yeah. Uh. Resident Evil Six for everyone playing at home. Uh, was supposed to be the the big like uh, I don't know what you should say October smash hit uh, following Borderlands two. Everyone of course was excited, pre ordered Borderlands two, um, really happy to get into it, uh, start grinding your levels, start looting things like that. The only other thing that most people had who is back? He's crawling on the ground like a baby. There's his ass. Ooh, butt crack. Ooh, look at that eighty four year old crawl on the ground for me. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, you you were expected to get it. Um, you were expected to get Borderlands 2. You were expected to, of course, like have I your. Was never gone. It was like you were never gone. I missed you so much. Um, but yeah, you were expected to get. You were expected to get Borderlands 2. You were expected to get uh, Resident Evil 6. That was the one everyone is excited for. You looked at it, and literally, even I went into it with the expectations of if it is just another five, I will be completely okay. If it's just a longer, better, juicier mm, five, I'll be so great. And that game was quite possibly one of the most like heinous disappointments I've had to deal with. Um, it was, I mean, it, it was weird. It was like they took, um, they ended up taking not Resident Evil 5 or 4 or anything like that. They said, hey, we got Leon Kennedy. Yeah, we got, we got Jill Valentine. She's somewhere in there. The name is mentioned. Should we get Claire Redfield? We got Chris Redfield. Hell yeah. We've got Ada Wong. It's everything you want to see in one thing. And P.S. It's also a movie. And you're like, huh, what the fuck? And that's my one for this one. And I'm sorry for you kids playing at home who are watching and you really hate the F-bomb, but I could not contain it for this freaking, oh God. It was a travesty. It was something that, that people um, that really just pre-ordered, like, we were excited about, really had to play. The demo came out, and I was like, really? This is, this is the demo. Uh, it feels like it's like the beta. Is it? No? no? Yeah? Okay. Uh, oh, God, so many things are wrong with this. And then on, on release day, I got it the next day. I got it the day it came out. I uh, got it through Amazon, actually, and I was just so excited to play it. Booted it up, loaded all my saves, went through the very first level. This first level just is what I looked at it and went and just my heart was <coughs> crushing, breaking into pieces. It was you you're playing Leon and you play Leon and some random girl. You're like this is a perfect place. You can just throw Ada Wong in. I don't even care. I just want to see her in a skirt or a dress or some Chinese dragon design. I don't even care. And you can just have Leon and Ada just chilling out together, hanging out, running around, palling around the city, and it's just some random new girl and you're like, "Okay, that's cool." And it's very dark. That was the first thing that really drew me to the game. Was it was very like not dark, like oh my god, this guy's getting eaten alive. And like he's visually the dark. Visually, you could not see what was on the screen. You're just like okay, walking around, walking around, walking around. She gets attacked by something. Who even cares? Bang, 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 bang. And I noticed the first thing is that the guns did not feel like they were in the last game. And the one thing that blew me away was they have it to where in every other Resident Evil game, the one thing I do love about it is that every time you were going to shot, you were going to shoot. You were like a a trained police officer. Yeah, I mean, police officers move through a building, you know, they keep the flashlight out, they're ready to go, they're going through it, they're having fun. But you always had to kind of, you had that, the fact that you could not move while you were aiming was something that kind of just drew in the fear effect of the game. Like, right. you had no way, like, this zombie's coming at you, and you're like, I don't want to get bit, I don't want to get bit. But you had to stop, breathe, and aim, and really, and it just freaked you out, because when the zombies weren't going down, or these creatures, lickers, you know, any of the mutant, mutant uh, type of uh, monstrous creatures. Lickers. That, lickers. Uh, um, when they were coming at you, you had no defense. Literally, your defense was this gun at the end of your, like, at the end of your reach, you had a gun, you're just like, bang, bang, or lower, or higher, or however you were doing it, and that was your only defense against these monsters. You could not just, like, sidestep and jump. Like, if this thing jumped at you, you had to drop the gun, and you're like, okay, ah, uh, oh, ah. Uh. <sighs> but now you can just kind of, like, pace around, and there's really no reason to ever, like, really run. You just kind of walk around, you're like, okay, my pistol's always out. It's great. The other thing that was the thing is the game is really dark and it's hard to get out all these beautiful details. It's actually a really beautiful game, but it's hard to get the details out because you can't see anything. And the best thing is, is I think after the first like intro level before it flashes like Resident Evil Six, like it it shows them the first actual level where you're like you choose if you want to play Leon, you want to play Chris, you want to play uh, some new guy. I think it's like Joey or something like that. Um, 
But I, I clicked Leon 1, I'm playing the very first level. They actually have these little, like, uh, their little headset thing. Like, they have a little earpiece, a little Bluetooth. And they're like, hey, guys, yeah, we're really, you know, hey, we're, we're connected. We know zombies exist. We, you know, we, we should be more trained for this. But really, we're just walking around with a pistol because that's smart. After the last games where you need to upgrade your shotgun to infinity and beyond to just blow apart, you know, the craziest, most grotesque things Umbrella Corporation can even come at you. No, we're just still walking around with a like, crappy pistol. This is all we have. Standard issue, Raccoon City Police Department. We couldn't do any better. We're uh, we're protecting the president. President, of course, zombie. Of course. Immediately. Why not? So that's that's, that's the pool, huh? That's the pool. You're just like, oh, my God, Mr. President. And you're in, like, the White House area, like, trying to save senators or whatever. Who cares? But they actually, they click their little Bluetooth thing, and a flashlight comes on. And I'm like, genius! Like, it's so dark, and there's a flashlight, and flashlights make games scary, and I love this. And you actually go through a whole part where there's there's no zombies. Like, literally, it's just creepy, like, walking around, and you're like, huh? Okay, Colbin, Colbin, you got no fire? Okay, well, good. And you just, you, you're, you're terrified. Like, it really gets freaky. And you, like, find this guy, you find his daughter, and you're, like, really happy to find him. Like, thank God, thank God, thank God. And there's a few zombies, and you're able to kill them off, whatever. And, but there's no control over the light. So there's certain parts where they're just like, okay, this hallway is clear. Click off. And you're just like, it's just blackness. It's just darkness. I have no idea. Oh, well, I walked into a counter again. I walk, walk, oh, again. Oh, yeah, oh, my God. And you're just hearing yourself because you there's such horrible control systems. And the one thing that really drew me to it too was like the opening level and the the first level, the amount of in game uh, the action sequences. The uh, I, forget, I forget the word for it. and I'm going to hate myself. Oh, the later. quick time event. Quick time events. Thank the, you very much. See, that's one thing I did notice about oh, the about the about the uh, the demo was like it was all quick time events. I'm like, this is not <laughs> survival horror anymore. No, it's a movie. <laughs> like you're you're buying Resident Evil Six, which is actually like Resident Evil Four, the movie. Like you kind of just play it yourself. Because after after the third Resident Evil movie, I don't think there were movies after that. Um, but no, yeah, you just it's so many quick time events just shoved down your throat for the littlest things too. It's like uh, this zombie touches you, quick time event to try and break its grab. And even if you break its grab, your health still goes faster down than you can possibly break the grab. And you're like, okay, that's cool. You shoot seven zombies and like the 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 loot drops. It's all that matters in the game. Oh, it's like it literally just like boom, a box of pistol ammo. Boom, a box of shotgun ammo. I don't even have a shotgun yet. It's dropping like fifty cartridges for a shotgun. I'm like, okay. I'm like trying to open my Attachy case. There's no inventory anymore. It's all streamlined so you can play right online. It actually plays more like uh, Resident Evil Outbreak, that old game. I mean, it was a good game. It was good for online. It was good for like a screw your neighbor game. That was the uh, PS2 uh, online Yeah, one, right? PS2 online. You could do things like um, like you could find a nail gun in wood and walk up to a door and just be like, dun, 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 and the other players could still be down there. And you're just like, <laughs> screw you guys. And you're just gone. But it plays very much like that, where it's very quick and good. But even that had like a backpack system. That had right. like an item organization. That's what makes Resident Evil such like a good game. Was that you could always like walk around. And it's like an incendiary grenade. You would just stare there and look at that and be like, "My inventory is full." And you would like look at it. You'd be like, "Herb, herb, herb, gun, ammo, ammo, ammo." And you're just like, "I really want this fiery grenade." And you would just, I would sit there and just bite my knuckle and be like. <sighs> What can I do without? I'll just drop a herb. I'll drop a herb. And then later when I'm bleeding out, I'm like, oh, I should have dropped that piece <laughs> of crap. Oh, God. And I'm just like, Leon, just live, buddy. Live. Like, Chris, you can do it. Take the knife out. But it's it's ridiculous. Like, it, it plays so much like a running gun. Just you don't even care about it. You're a super cop. Just like, jumping over, like, cars. Like, just nailing zombies in the face with quick time events. Like, uh, going around just pistol whipping things. And it's just ridiculous. Like, yeah, I played as Leon. And uh, one of the very first things you get, you get a pistol. And you get a standard issue, his knife that he always has in every right. game. And that knife. I, like halfway through, I'm, I'm shooting my pistol and I just run out of ammo immediately. Just out of ammo, I'm like, okay, well, I'm dr ammo's dropping like crazy, but it's just like pistol ammo. This is that, this is that, and it's like there's no inventory, so I'm just picking it all up like Borderlands, like <laughs> like a fat kid with candy, just eating it. No, I and heard like, I heard they did a better job with the uh, the healing instead of like getting herbs. You had like you had like pills or something. Oh no 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 good sir. Uh, you still find herbs. Okay. Literally, you still find herbs and herbs. What it does is you'll equip them to a hot key. And the hotkey is like a heal button. You immediately click oh, the I heal see. button. And what they do is they do a pill animation. They like, you grind up the herb. So you're like, you equip to the hotkey and he's like, Ch -ch -ch. and it's like really quick. It's really efficient. It feels like an online game that you can just run and gun through again. There's no like need for tension. After like the first three zombies where they really built up that there were zombies in the world. It was just like, you walk into a hallway, 50 zombies just start pouring in and just fight for your life. And you like, just you, you, anytime you want to heal, it's not like before where it was like, you just stop and you're like, hook. Yeah, and you'd like worry about zombies, or like you don't have to like worry about like ks, 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 with a first aid spray or anything like that. You literally everything. If you mix a red and green herb, it equates to how many of these pills you get, wow. or like how many of these like little like they look like Tic Tacs. 
like Leon pulls out like this little like clear little case and he's like and, like and you as many times as you hit the I think it was like the right bumper on PS3 it's just like and he just goes and eats them like a pill fiend he's just like oh this is delicious Vicodin and just like starts running around he's just like okay and heal and just instant healing you're like oh okay that's really efficient and you don't have to stop to heal that's the best thing wow. you can you full on run faster than the gun out and you're like Oh, oh, that's 14. Oh, and you just eat them like Pac-Man. Like, wow. It's ridiculous. And you're just like, you're like, this is the game that I was so excited for. This was like, this was going to be my, 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 my game to take the heroin needle that is Borderlands 2 out of my arm and just go, no, man, you can do it. You can be a little scared. This is going to be my, my replacement for Dead Space and Dead Space 2, like those really good just horror genre games that I'm excited about. Like This is going to make me feel better about like buying and investing in Resident Evil because those movies are not doing anything for me. And the game just does not deliver anywhere at all. That's like, a shame. It that just... It's so plagued with bugs. It's just, and the fact that you oh, that, that it that that they were bringing you back to to Raccoon City and they're bringing zombies excited. back. I mean, it was making it. It was like, all right, well, four and five. You know, they were good games, but they they just didn't feel like Resident Evil to me. It was oh no, like, there was like let's let's make it let's make Resident Evil like a like a like a horror anthology now, and we yeah. won't uh, we won't uh, continue on. We'll we'll have it all connected with the Umbrella Corporation, but have nothing to do with like zombies or not. We'll have cultists and weird. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I I can appreciate Africans. that. I I, <laughs> I can't even. I'm not going to go into Resident Evil Five. I I loved Resident Evil Five as a game. It was just I'm I'm happy the way Capcom has done it for four and five. Uh, yes, it wasn't zombies, but it was still, in my opinion, survival horror. It was a little bit more actiony. It did have the quick time events, but it didn't shove it down your throat right. like Resident Evil Six has. It's just there were games that I really loved because it showed a progression of a company. Like you show a company that really gets under fire from two zo- or like three or four zombie invasions right. to like different areas of the world. They're you know doing shady crap. They're doing shady business, and then they they go under. They get bought out. They get sold. They get sold in the free market. They have to rebrand their company and like sneak around and like they're like all like the lead up and like those um those like digital movies they sent out for Resident Evil like for the in between stories from uh from like uh three right, to the, four the CG movies yeah the CG movies like all that really filled in the gaps and like told me what Umbrella Corporation was doing and like how they were doing it and what was going on. And I love that. I really love that about that. But the, the problem I ran into so many times was it was, it was something that really like filled the gaps. It made me feel whole inside. And Resident Evil six was just like ripping a hole open in my chest. Like, and I just wanted to, I, I wanted to kill somebody like playing it. I mean, it, it was a game. It was a game I was going to push myself through. And the, the person who actually got it for me, cause it, you know, I said before in last show it was my birthday month. So I was actually gifted this game and I just, I couldn't in good faith keep it. Like I, I was like, I was like, I know you want me to be happy with what you're giving me. And I know that like, I'm going to push myself through this game because I, I know I'm going to love the story anyway because Capcom tries to do a good time, but really it's just, it's bad. Like I can even say it like in a Resident Evil game, I've had to use my, my knife only in the most dire situations. Right. Like literally it is, it is early game or really mid late game where I'm like, I only have a rocket launcher and the machine gun. Uh, I guess I pulled the knife out for like this little wimpy zombie. <laughs> What, and it one, took skill. Like, it took skill to use the knife. One thing I loved about the early Resident Evil games is you would always, like, come close or run out of ammo and be like, what the always. hell do I do next? Even in 4. Even in 4, it was still like, there were times, like I said, you'd look at that incendiary grenade and you're just like, there's only one of these. Right. This entire level. Oh my god, I need that thing. Do I have to give up like, my healing for Exactly. Yeah. You have to give up, like, a box of ammo and you're just like, I feel really bad about leaving those five sniper bullets back there. Oh, and you just shake with fear because you don't know that you'll need it or you don't know that you won't. And it's just, it's, it's one of those things that freak you out. And even like Resident Evil 4 introduced the first like chainsaw maniacs. Yeah. Those things shed a, like a freaking shiver up my spine. And that was the thing too, is like, the, that's the thing. With Resident Evil 6, there were times where I had maybe 150 pistol ammo. And I'm like, I am ready to lock and load. Let's go. And even still, I found it less effective shooting into a zombie four or five times than simply running up with my knife, cutting him in the face, not getting hurt at all. No repercussions from the cut. And literally, they have it so that if you hit a zombie with a knife, or like you shove them with a me- like a melee attack, or like a, a bull rush, you have the ability to do a quick time event again. Oh, and it's like it's literally just like a tapping of the R, or like I think it's R one or L one. And it's Leon apparently is a kung fu splinter master trained <laughs> by the Ninja Turtles himself, and he goes into the series of like flowing monk kicks that is just so seamlessly perfect to knock a zombie and just crack him in the skull. And you're like. Are you kidding me? Like, like apparently, Leon after Resident Evil Four was like, 
I am completely okay to help the president. We got this. Here's the story. Oh, uh, yeah, Chris is doing something in Africa, helping the children or feeding the hungry kids. I don't know. By the way, I'm going to go into the sewer grate. Don't ask anything about me. And he was just eating pizza and learning how to use a uh, samurai sword. And he's just, he's, it was, it was ridiculous. Like, I was literally running into parts where I was just like, okay, uh, one cut with a knife to the zombie, kick, 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 kick. And all the three zombies around me are all dead now. Okay, run over here, flying kick into this guy. Okay, uh, knife to this guy. And even, like you were saying before, like you were excited because they brought you back to Raccoon City. They brought you back to zombies. Zombies, like, yes, Walking Dead even tonight. Like, you gotta, you have to appreciate those things. Like, like zombies are, are one of the great things from horror that you can take. Because how do you kill that which is already dead? You have no answers to it. Like, I mean, shoot him in the head, of course. but Or remove the brain. Destroying the head or removing the brain. That's right. Um, but, I mean, you just look at it and they're just like a classic horror villain. It's like Dracula and Castlevania, that kind of thing. And you just, it's one of those things you really tie to like classic video games of classic horror. And it's just, it's a good feel. But the thing with Resident Evil 6 is it even cheapens that for you. It ruins that classic just reminiscence of these zombies. Like, you remember back in Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 where you're like, Nemesis was insane, but really, I was more afraid to walk in a room with seven zombies because that was a lot of pistol ammo or at least like three shots out of my shotgun. That's rough. Like, that's a lot of ammo in those games. And you walk in and even, it just feels cheap. And first level with Leon. Leon and some random Hispanic girl, which um, someone's going to probably blow up the comments with her name and make me feel like an idiot because we're not knowing, but um, I'm just going to say, like, you you literally, you, you're going, I remember you go through, like, this bus, and you're going in, and you're like, bang, 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 zombies are not immune to bullets or knives or kicking, apparently. Amazing. These zombies are crap. And you're just mowing down zombies like they're nothing. Like, the first three, you're just like, you see them, and you're like, oh, my God! And you have no answers to them. They're just new. They're exciting. They're going to try and kill you. And you're thinking it's like the last game where if you get bit hard enough, you're going to bleed out and you just feel very bad about yourself and no one's going to be able to help you at all. And you get to a point where you're on this bus and you're just like, okay. And literally these big skinless red monstrosities just come charging through the windows, breaking through, and they're just there. And they're, you kick them, you snipe them, whatever, and they go to their knees and their chest opens up and a heart starts pumping. And you have to shoot them in the heart. And you're like, that's not a zombie. That's like some that's, crazy. That's General mutant. Grievous. Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, I'm like, apparently I'm Obi Wan Kenobi now with my ninja skills as well. Trained by the Ninja Turtles, taught by the Jedi, uh, maybe of the Sith. Who knows? And now I have to kill things in their heart. And once again, it's just like you walk. I walked up to it again, and I was like, I could use this pistol or the shotgun I found on level one, mind <laughs> you. And and I could just walk up and go, knife. And the knife is ten times more effective than any of the other weapons that I had in level one. I'm just like, this is ridiculous. Like this is the most ridiculous crap it ever. And even still, the kick. You're just like, okay, I cut you. Your heart exposed. Oh, I can do the kick. Kick, kick, kick. You're dead. Or he would like run up and like, like football, like judo, grab them and just like bring them to the ground and smack their head open, or <laughs> knock them to the ground and just like crush their brains in against the curb. It was like uh, American History X or something, you know. But the, that seems that seems to be something something really uh, really uh, prevalent in video games nowadays is is your melee attack is, like, the super powerful attack no matter what. I mean, even in Halo, it was like you run up to them and, like, bash them in the side of the head. It takes less than, like, shooting them with a with an assault rifle. I mean, it's like oh, yeah. every time there's a melee attack, it's, like, a hundred times more powerful than, than a gun to the face. Which is it's something that just ama- amazes me, too, and it's happening a lot in games. Like, it's ridiculous. And it's, it's you look at, yeah, like I said, like you said, Halo. Halo, the biggest thing was, like, you could sneak up behind someone, boom, one hit, they're dead. And you're like, okay. And you, you look at, like, even, like, uh, that, there was a game, uh, Games Workshop did called Space Marine, and you had, like, a uh, combat knife, or you had other ways to do melee, and sometimes the melee attacks were just wicked. You would just cut down, like, four or five orcs in a row, and you're like, hell yeah. Here's a war, the chainsaw at the end of your sword. Like, yes. the melee is always good. But that's the thing you're looking at, is, like, those games. Uh, for instance, Halo. Halo, they have, they have freaking guns that you get handheld that take down spacecraft, things that are meant to withstand the structure of a planet to, like, Go into, like, the atmosphere, leave the atmosphere, no problems at all, abduct people from their homes, and literally, their, their units, their, uh, the Covenant, are covered in, like, these holographic force field generating shield things, and you're still walking up just like, dead, dead. Yeah. Should we use this gun that has all these bullets that are trained and designed to kill everything? Now I got my fist, bro. Power up. Yeah. Yeah, it's and like, like you all of a sudden become He Man. It's ridiculous. Like it's not even He Man. Like scale. Even a He Man got kicked around by Skeletor every once in a while. Like there were there were times where where he he just had no answers. Like he just he was done. Like he he had to he had to resort to like his intellect or the intellect of of the masters. Like he had just 
had to think to someone else. Like he had right. to look over there and be like, "What's the plan? What's the technology we're gonna use today?" And it, you know, it was a it was a fist to fist show. Like even Ninja Turtles, you look at that. And I love. I'm mentioning Ninja Turtles a lot because the new an, the new animated thing is out, and I and it's I'm, fantastic. I'm it's, addicted. It's, it's I can't an even awesome help it. cartoon. If you like the original Ninja Turtles cartoon, you have to check this out. I think it's one of the only times besides like Avatar: The Last Airbender, I will I will completely support a Nickelodeon show. Um, but no, it's just it's it's you look at it, and even like crazy melee stuff like that. They're still looking at you know they have to have tactics, they have to work together, they have to overcome anger, they have to do something to make this work, and, and just and more and more in video games like. Yeah, like, I hate to say it, but, like, once again, it's one of my favorite games, Dead Space. Got it right. Like, yeah, the melee's great, but it's really only great for knocking them away from you so you can shoot them with this thing that cuts through freaking buildings. Like, that's your weapon. That's your power is to dismember them. You're not just going to beat them to death with your gun. I mean, you can. Or your super powerful kick that's used for mainly just opening boxes. Exactly. Like, your your curb something, you're just like, goo, no ammo. Dang it. Goo, no ammo. Speaking of Dead God. Space. Oh, God. Um, that's that's the top well not not top of my list because we haven't started our lists yet. Mm. But Dead Space is, in my opinion, uh, my favorite scary game of all time. Really? Uh, yeah, I I played it thinking you know this is going to be fun. This is this is when especially in the very opening when the when the when the when the when the, uh, the solar shields open up open up and you're and you're coming on the ship and you're like wow this is like. This is like Event Horizon. This is gonna be. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be a fun ride. This is what AVP should have been. So I, I like, I like, I like turned on the surround sound, turned off the lights, and I'm ready to go. And ten minutes later, the lights came back on, and the surround sound went off. And I'm like, I don't want to move. I'm scared out of my ass. <laughs> the first time you see their version of a xenomorph, and oh, you're just like, Oh my holy god! Holy god! With all the noises, and you're like, Would you please come out of the vent instead of scaring the crap out of me? I, yeah. Anyone who's played the Dead Space hasn't played the Dead Space games, and you want to be scared. These these games do it for you. Dead Space especially, one especially, especially when that. Just randomly, that tentacle comes out and grabs you by the foot, and you have to shoot it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god. It was, it was actually one thing I, I freaked out about. I just um, I remember playing it. It came out, got me. I was like, oh my god, Cthulhu! And I freaked out, and I didn't realize you could shoot it. I didn't realize it was still in the game. Like it was like, like I wasn't used like to. Like it wasn't a cutscene. Exactly. I'm I'm so used to now. Like Resident Evil Six. Like I as much as I complain about it, it's literally when you're like, oh, that's a cutscene. It actually is a cutscene. Yeah. Whereas like games like Dead Space and even some of the newer Silent Hills have done it to where it's like. This beautifully rendered HD monstrosity comes out, just takes you out, you're gone, and you're like, oh my god, and you just realize, oh, these buttons still work. I can still, I'm still in full control of everything I'm doing. That's, that's amazing. Like it's, and it's something that is kind of like a, like a nod in the right direction, I like to say. Like they used to do it, they, they did it a long time ago with a game called Gungrave, and that was just a, it was pure like gun porn, I would like to say. It was just you as a guy with a giant, like um, you had a coffin on your back. And you ran around two pistols and other weapons, and you just blow through rooms of like yakuza and stuff. But one thing they really did with the ending, they really solidified it. And anyone who hasn't played it, I'm sorry if I'm going to ruin the ending for you, but we do a lot of spoilers here on Nerdorama. Nerdorama <laughs> is not spoiler free. No, you're not. Um, but they what they did at the very end of it is you are so built up, and they do a great thing, just like they did with like Handsome Jack and Borderlands Two, and like um, with your girlfriend in uh, Dead Space. They built them up as these people that you should care about or hate or whatever, and they built up his his arch nemesis. The final cutscene rolls after you destroy him up, and the final cutscene goes through this entire cutscene and gets to the end, and you just have your gun right in his face. And it still looks exactly like a cutscene. And I think I sat there when I first played that game for maybe 15 minutes, just like, when is he going to pull the trigger already? And finally, I was just like, I wonder. Click the fire button, blew his brains out against my screen, and was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> this is... I'm, this is the <laughs> best scene ever in a like, video game. Like, just my mind just blew open and... Just everything just hit the back of my wall, and my cats had to lick up all the debris on my couch. It was just disgusting everywhere, and I just couldn't help it. Like I just, it was one, it was one of those things. Like, I'm glad, I'm glad your head grew back too. I got, I got better. I got better. I was a newt. She turned me into a newt. I got yes. better. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I just love when video games do that. They give you the power. They don't just take it away with these freaking quick time events. They don't just make you feel like a god. Like I like, like if I want to feel like a god, I'll go play God of War. That's because, another. That's because another... I'm a god. Like that is what it, it, it's in the title. I'm a god of war. Like I got it. But in like Resident Evil, you're like, okay, there's residents, they're evil. But it doesn't say. <laughs> it, like, like, I mean, like if you're gonna go by titles, like you're not gonna go like Leon Kennedy is a super ninja. That's like six. That's not what I'm playing. I'm playing a zombie survival horror game. Right. I'm not playing. I run through the city, jump kicking zombies because I just don't care. If I want that, I'm gonna play like um. Oh, what is that? There's a uh. Oh goodness gracious. Oh, uh, there's one where you're in a mall, and I love the uh, oh, Dead, Dead Rising. Rising. Yes. Dead Rising. I love that game. Like, it's a Capcom game, too. It is a great game, 
for just that wacky run but around. But it's tongue in cheek. They don't take it seriously. Yeah, they, but at the same time, they do take it seriously. Yeah, the story you actually feel about the characters are like, oh my god, please save me! Oh my god, crazy guy, Jason Voorhees. And what's and great? Around. What's great is you can play the game. <laughs> you can play the game like it wants you to, or you can just hide in a corner until a, you're 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 <laughs> just until the time loop runs out until yeah. the rescue plane comes down. <laughs> and there's an ending for that. <laughs> yeah, there's an, there's end, an ending for like any way you play this game. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, then that's what I mean. It's like. I, if I want a game like that, I know what I'm getting into. When I saw Dead Rising, I saw the trailers, I saw the demo, I saw what I was getting into. It was a game that I could play serious, or I could put giant Lego heads on the zombies and laugh and dance around them and go... I mean, my God, you can play him in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah, so. you can play him in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You can play him as Mega Man in Dead Rising 1. Yes. You can actually unlock a Mega Man suit and you walk around with a Mega Buster going... Pew, pew, pew. And it's just goofy and it's fun. And it's, it's a great game. Yes. But with Resident Evil, it's it's... In my opinion, it has always held itself to a, a higher standard. It has always been a game that should be scary. Even with Resident Evil 4, I was a little afraid. Like, first time I blew someone's head off with a headshot with my, my sniper rifle, and a tentacle came out, I was just like, what the hell do I do? Do I, do I shoot the tentacle or the bot? I, didn't even, I was afraid to do headshots in that game for the longest freaking time, just because of that exact moment. And I was like, oh, okay, that's rough. Even like Resident Evil, 5, uh, Resident Evil, yeah, Resident Evil Five. I was like, I was playing Chris. I was going through. First time the freaking executioner comes out, and just cuts down a house in half. I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Mali Ray Cyrus, save me. I have no, I have no idea. Hannah Montana, please, please save me. Oh my god. And I think I wet myself a little bit because that guy just freaks me out a little bit, huh? Just a little bit. Because like, I'm sorry, Resident Evil Five was for what it was. People will say it's a trashy game. But it was a very beautifully rendered game, well, see, and I things know that so were many scary. Who love that game? I don't. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a good like teamwork. You and me online, boom, run and gun, but still very scary. I just got like, tired of Resident Evil not being Resident Evil anymore. Yeah, I, I got I got tired of it being like, oh, you're Superman with a gun against the Umbrella Corporation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's great. Whatever happened to you know? It did. It did become very one man army ish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very. Uh, I, I understand what you're saying with that, but it's just like that to take it to the extreme that it is at now. I, I I mean, to not even care about dying, I would go down and like <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, ladies, and I would. But I mean, I would I would like get unconscious or whatever in Resident Evil Six, and my partner would just walk up and be like, "Pills in your mouth." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, okay, N neato. I guess I'm just heroin hero now. I'm gonna go chase a dragon and some zombies, I guess." But I just I, just, I can't even do it. If if you in your viewers. You in your or, brains or listeners or listeners here on we might Nas National Nerd Core Public Radio NP. I don't even nerd know. Nerd R. I don't know. Nerd R. Rama. I, nerd anyway, Rama Radio. Anyway. If you were out there and you're listening to me and you're hearing me rant, and please, if you like Resident Evil Six, good for you. I don't want to talk to you. Well, if you haven't good played it, give it a chance, and you know. Yeah, I mean, I. And if you do, if you do like it, and you do have a difference of opinion, and you're just seething in your in your seat just this josh guy <laughs> just like that give Ninja us a call turtles. give us a call and talk to us it's 727-493-2055 that's 727-493-2055 we will talk to you we may not be friendly no i'm kidding we will be friendly. he'll be friendly i'll i'll tell you you're an idiot that's right but i mean that's what happens but or, we know we'd like to see some differing opinions too. or they could completely post on comments on our facebook on Nor nerdorama on facebook or on our Twitter at nerd underscore orama. Orama. At Twitter. Um, but yeah, kids, I mean, I, I would say if you really like Resident Evil, it's worth a rent. Not a buy, not anything like that. I mean, I, I mean, it is, it is the return to Resident Evil it, in it, a way. It's, it's like, it's <coughs> them taking something that should have been beautiful, raping it in the back alley like George Lucas did to E.T. in the Star Wars, and then just going, that's what you got, kids. This is... To me, it looks like it looks a like Resident Evil, the arcade game. Oh yeah, it really, it kind of is. I, I did have the feeling that I should have needed more quarters. Yeah, like it just. Anyway, that's that's where I'm at with that. I know we have some more stuff to talk about. Wow, I'm we, sorry, I took up so much of the time. If people are going to complain about well, that, one thing we are it's gonna, a horror game. We are going to go late tonight, so uh, mm. so uh, get comfortable, kids. Get some oh, hot chocolate. In fact, um, we're going to do something a little different mm -hmm. uh, because we are we are self we are self running tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I do still have to make some more tweaks, so I am going to run a uh, a little music, and we're, we're going to take a small break, just a small break. break. Uh, I hope I, I hope uh, this won't turn people away. Uh, not the music mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. The music is mine. Uh, I if if people that people that don't know me, I do uh, I do do DJ my own music, and uh, this is a little ditty that uh, I me and uh, my uh, old bandmate Brandon. 
uh, made together. Uh, it took us it took us a while to do. There's no actual music video to it. It's just it's just going to be a still photo. But uh, enjoy the music, and uh, if you like it, I'll post more. So uh, we will be back momentarily, and uh, we will be back with our lists, uh, talking a lot of horror, and uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, stay tuned. Hey, classy nerdorama viewers. All right, we are back. Hey guys. Uh, I hope uh, I hope everyone had a good time on that little break. I know we did. Uh, that didn't sound right at all. <laughs> hmm. Let me just wipe my mouth off. I guess. Oh yeah. Uh, so, I got uh, water. It's yeah. Cold. That's that's, cold. Mm-hmm. that's that's exactly what I meant. The, yeah. The viewers, feel how cold that is. Feel yeah. that word? Do you feel, feel that? 
refreshing. If you can feel that, please call us at 727-493-2055. Oh, really? <laughs> we're, we're pimping out the water now, folks. I don't know. It, I was I was told Talk it to us about your experiences with Zephyr Hills water. It rubs right up on my nipple there. I, I it was it nice and cold <laughs> and toasty. I was told that we don't mm. get the number away enough, so I'm just do, really? I'm doing it like crazy, so Oh goodness. Well, maybe we'll get a caller ever. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe we're kind of we're kind of like late night. We're like a, we're like a like a really early Leno or 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 just nerdy Conan. Wait, nerdier Conan. <laughs> nerdy Conan. Yeah. That would be the way to do it. Anyway, so <coughs> so what so do we got on part 2 of Nerdorama part 2 Oween? That's right. We are in Nerdoween part 2. That we are we are we are knee deep into October. Um last week we discussed our favorite horror movies. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, we had a good time and uh and uh, the uh, the extra video got a lot of good uh, responses, so I'm going to probably be doing more of that. Stay tuned for that, kids. Or we can. I mean, I'm not going to just relegate it to me. Oh, it'd, be, it'd be great. It'd be great. If, if you want to see more of Josh. No one wants to see He'll gain me. weight. This is, oh, f- <laughs> words I've already used this episode. At you a good sir. Oh, right. Monocle. That's mm, <laughs> Classier. Notorama. Increasing our classiness by monocle percent. Thank you. Um so let's let's <laughs> let's get into let's get into uh I kill me. Since we're doing favorites still, let's do our favorite uh top five uh horror movie villains. Top five horror movie villains. Yes, uh we wow. like lists here on Nerdorama. Yeah. By the way. We were noticing that as a trend that may be a new segment. Nerds nerds like lists. I love lists. And uh, we crave structure because our parents never gave it to us and that's why we went to like horror movies and video games. It's because daddy was just like Here's like twenty bucks for the week. Go do something fun, kid. And you're like, thanks, Dad. And then you're just like, can we go play ball? And he's like, I'm working. And you're like, I guess I'll go play a Sonic on my Sega CD. Okay. I love <laughs> Sonic CD. Yeah, but, see, exactly. Uh, but uh, daddy, yeah, daddy was just like, here's twenty bucks. We're we're nerds and we love lists. <laughs> By the way, if you love lists or if you hate lists, please give us a call and tell us how much you love or hate them. Really? The number is 727-493-2055. I think I'm going to call just so we can stop doing that. Hold on. <laughs> okay. What was the number? How much feedback will we get from this? Oh, we'll get a lot. Sweet. Yes. For anyway. our own fans. We're doing top five uh, favorite uh, horror movie five. villains. That's one more than four. And one less, one less than, than six. six. That's weird. Yes, okay. it's, it's game. So let's start off with Adam's top five horror villains. Number five. Number five. This one's really hard for me to do because I have a lot of. If you watch the you extras, you get a raging boner during the entire thing. Yeah, this is great. This is this is this is like the most exciting you'll see me is in October. Um, so number five, not, not the not my least favorite at all. I mean, one of my absolute favorites is uh, Tony Todd as Candyman. Oh yeah. Uh, Candyman. The Candy first, the the first Candyman really, really, really just in, impacted me in horror. I mean, it's Clive Barker. It's my favorite. It's my favorite uh, horror uh, creator. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Candyman was a very. It was almost a sad story about uh, uh, a, what happens to him with the bees. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's just so tragic, but at the same time, he's so fucking evil, and he's got that hook. Oh, 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 that's- Pause the tape, folks. Oh. Adam is allowed to drop f bombs. I am not. I Why said viewers? it once. Why? Why have you told me this, all of you viewers? You know who you are, Glenn, and your <laughs> kids. Continue. By the way, enjoy the games. By the way, um, yeah, he's just—it's it, so powerful his 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 tragicness and evilness that I had to drop an f bomb for him, much it like is, your Resident Evil. Yeah, okay, okay, I understand. Is that also why he's five? Is because of his <laughs> name five times? Oh, I didn't even notice that. Wow. I, you're you're writing my list sh- from sh- now sh- on. Sh- 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 you planned that. I, don't don't let anyone know you didn't plan that. That's probably because of the accident. It's the remember. accident, yeah. yeah. Anyone who knows Adam or follows him on Facebook will know about the accident and our hearts do go out to Adam. We're and, we're glad he got better. This is actually his ghost. And the and the uh It's all pre recorded. And uh we'll have to, we're gonna have to have a moment of silence for the nerd wagon. Oh, stickers be with us. Okay, that's enough silence. That's enough radio silence. Number four. Number four. That's four. Number four is uh well, it's 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 kind of cliche, but it's it's Jason Voorhees. Isn't it always cliche though? Yeah, he's he's you, you get one. He's a Sounds supernatural, bad. unstoppable force, you know. Yeah, and he's funny. He doesn't have to even have to say anything, and he's funny because he kills with anything. Well, yeah, it's I mean, great. Well, uh, yeah. He's he's not Michael Myers. He doesn't kill with anything. He kills with a machete mostly. 
Oh no, no, no! I mean, come on, the machete is classic. Yeah, but he's he's killed with spear guns. He's killed with with uh, pitchforks. He kills with anything. Not Arrows. a dead monkey. No, he did not use a dead monkey. Not yet. Not but uh, there is still hope. Still, there's a new hope. He's the new. He's the new Star Wars villain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you're watching lucas like come on <laughs> you can't do worse than jar jar just for you dennis and chad we are talking about darth dick push uh that's, a, that's another that's another in, inside joke but inside anyway jokes we always um number three number three that's i'm gonna do that every time three now. three that's one more than two and that's one three, one three, less three. than four <laughs> that's number one three times that's how important it is um pazuzu from the exorcist I could do Pazuzu. Yeah, it was a very evil villain. Uh, <laughs> took over a little girl. Yeah. Um, one of one of my scariest top scariest films didn't make the top five. Made yours, but oh, it made it, it made my top it ten. It makes the top five. It's one of the first movies that all scared the crap out of me as a kid. That's right. It, well, it was a scary movie, of but uh, I just I will, I will say this in horror. Just uh, while we're on the subject of little kids, nothing creeps me out freaking more in a horror movie. If you're a director and you ever see this footage, just know that. You scare the hell out of me whenever you put like a little kid in there and they're just like, want to play with me? I'm like, no, little girl, you can go play with dead Barney. I don't care. Like, uh, like Village of the Damned? It's just, yeah, I mean, oh, God, no, no. no. Well, oh, really? I thought yeah. it, was, it was John Carpenter. In a, in a way, I have to love kinda, it. Kind of like it, when they put it in like anything, like Silent Hill's done it, uh, Resident Evil's done it. Uh, you even get it a lot in Dead you're Space too. You're all going to die down here. You're, you're all going to die down here. Like, like little kids and English accents <laughs> scare the hell out of me. Like Damien. <laughs> oh yes, it's all for you, Damien. I'm just like, oh, oh my god, look at like uh, Chucky doesn't because he's a toy. Oh, but, Chucky's stupid. But I'm just saying, like little kids in general. Okay, anyway, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is your list. Uh, number two, number two. two. I really like doing this. The thing you take when you take a. Ooh. Ooh, and it rhymes with two. Anyway, two. um, this is this character is from a movie. I wouldn't exactly call it horror. It was more just uncomfortable. It's it's one of my absolute favorites. I think it was on my list of uh, of horror movies, mm-hmm. even though it was just very tense and it it really made me uncomfortable and made me feel different things. You, you uh, I did talk about it a lot. It was um, <clears throat> Otis B. Driftwood, mm-hmm. um, Otis from uh, The Devil's Rejects. Yeah. Uh, more, more the Devil's Rejects, Otis, than the House of a Thousand Corpses. You didn't get to see him much, and he, he was kind of crazy in the first one. But, mm-hmm. but he was just, just ungodly evil in I'm the su- second one. I'm actually surprised a Rob Zombie movie villain got to be the, in the top five. Oh, that, oh, uh, uh, Devil's, 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 Devil's he, does, he does good for horror. Don't get me wrong, but like some of the Halloween movies, I'm just gonna. But oh, the first Halloween was fantastic. That was good, but, but after that, I'm like. But Devil's Rejects made my top movie of 2005. It was that good, in my opinion. Yeah. That it, it just changed. It was like it was like it was like you feel bad for these guys. Mm-hmm. You feel good for these guys. You bit. want them to die, but you want them to live, and you don't. You just and by the end of the movie, you're just like, please survive. And I don't know. And it just it really affected me. Yeah. And uh, I I'm gonna sound really really psychopathic right now, but I kind of I kind of related to Otis. Y- yeah. So nope. He's in right there. Yeah, anyway. All right, so what was uh, your number one? Number one. Yeah, okay. Number one. Number one. I'm going to do a recap of, of top five. Is no, it, I'm not going to do a recap. Come back? You can come back. Okay. I'm right over here. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've talked about it. I've talked <laughs> about the series. I've had people want to watch them over again, uh, the first two movies. My number one uh, horror movie villain is it has to be the, uh, the head Cenobite, Pinhead. <laughs> he is he is ungodly evil and he loves his job. Oh yeah. The pain. He loves the pain, the screaming, the agony. Um you can't go wrong with this guy. He he'll, he'll come no, 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 no. You can't go right with this guy. Uh, that's true. <laughs> He's pure evil. Like let's get that straight. You know, he can't go wrong with being evil. There we he, go. He loves this thing. And uh here in an interview with Clive Barker and he talks about how how evil he is and mm-hmm. how he still gets m- fan mail from women wanting to bear his children. Oh, well, that's not scary yeah, at this, all. Yeah, it's great. I mean, he's like he's a horror rock star this yeah. this this pinhead fella. <laughs> This guy, he's got the right type of moxie. This pinhead, I tell you. Uh, yeah. So that's my that's my top five. Uh, right. Pinhead made made number one. 
Um, I had an image for him, but I'm not going to look him up because I'm I'm tired of I'm tired of zooming. Out. Yeah, yeah. But uh, tune in, tune into the uh, extras, and I'll talk about more of my favorite uh, villains. Boom. But uh, let's let's hear uh, let's hear your top five uh, my... favorite uh, horror movie villains. Well, my my horror list. I actually took it as a time to really put it as uh, not not so much horror movie, but I wanted to incorporate all of horror. Just kind okay. of like throw it in there. Um, my number five is actually, uh, it's actually not a person or really a, like a creature or a demon. I mean, it is a creature in its own way. It's actually, um, the, I, I once saw a movie called The Ruins and there's... Underrated movie. That movie uh, is, that movie is, is, is creepy and gory as shit. It's, it's crazy Ooh. as hell. Ooh, I said again. I said another curse That's word. That's the S-bomb! Um, but no, uh, yeah, the, the actual plants from that... Sorry, words, Glenn's children. <laughs> sorry, Glenn's kids and his D&D club. Um, but no, yeah, I, uh, the plants from that... It literally scared the living hell out of me when I saw the movie because there were plants that would like you'd fall asleep and they'd impregnate you with another plant and you would grow into a plant monster and it would kill you and there's like ten like freaking oh it just gross me out. There's like parts where you just see it like crawling around in their eyes and like you just knew they were infected. Or and was I, it that that scene where they had to cut off the leg? Oh, oh my man, goodness. Ooh, and it, that made 127 hours look like child's play. Oh goodness, yeah, it was just it was the the roughest freaking movie I I'd, I'd been through in one of like. It, and like you said, it's, it's really underrated. Not yeah. a lot of people like that. A uh, friend of mine it's actually, a, it's actually who introduced me to it. It's actually as good as the book. The book is creepy as hell, yeah, it's too. Just, it's a creepy freaking movie. By the way, and, it's based on a book. And the re- <laughs> Oh, really? No, I didn't, I didn't get it. Unlike, unlike I, everything else in the, the world. Book. I didn't get it. All right. Adam knows it. But, um, but no, uh, the, the one big thing, the reason why it gets my top five slot, I mean, it's no Candyman. It's not, I'm going to say the plant's name five times and you show up and murder me with plant babies. But it, it freaks me out because it has that same feel, that, that helplessness feel. That there was, right, because they are trapped. They're trapped on that thing. The people are going to shoot them with machine guns if they come off or kill them with machetes. And literally, while they're on there, they have no defense against this plant other than just staying awake permanently and not going anywhere near the plant. And that's their only defense. Like, and it's just, I love that. I love that grip of fear where it's just like, oh yeah, you guys are screwed. <laughs> there's nothing you can do. And that's and it, a, that's a good thing you mentioned that because it, it is an underrated movie and anyone who hasn't seen it or has been uh, apprehensive to see it, check it out. It is yeah. really a decent can, horror movie. You can almost always go on FX if you have cable and you can find it at like 10 o'clock at night. Boom, the ruins. They, they love to play that freaking movie and it's a good movie. Like people should watch it. Yeah. What's, um, a, what's your number four? My number four. Number four. Yes. Actually uh, ties into the one show that you and I missed tonight. Oh. Uh, the Walking Dead. <laughs> I know you don't like it, but I love that show. I do. I do need to give it another chance. The, the books are so good, and my books. I mean, comics. The comic books are good, and I love them. Um, my, uh, it's actually my horror villain. <laughs> so they made they made comic books out of this. Yeah, uh. Walking Dead's a comic book <laughs> show. That's why there's comic book men after it. It makes perfect sense. Give this guy Kevin Smith more money. He does great movies like Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> I'm sorry, I puked my lungs out. By the way, if you want to see a good horror movie, don't watch Red State. <laughs> oh. But my number four uh, is The Governor. Oh, The Governator. I, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, he is a crazy, scary man. Um, no, I, um, I, The Governor from, Re- uh, from Walking Dead literally just has a special place in my heart for I freaking hate you. And it's it's someone who literally scared the pants off me, and it's it's a it's an entire comic book and now a show about zombies and how scary the zombie apocalypse is, and how that all the people in the show are already guess what infected. I spoiled some stuff for you, but Nerdorama we have spoilers. Um, and this guy, this is a man who was in charge of an entire civilization, this town that they find, and I'm spoiling it for Walking Dead fans, but you should have read the comics like a good freaking fan. <laughs> Not my problem. I won't spoil too much for you. Suffice to say, this man is in charge of a lot of really nice people at the end of the day. They're kind-hearted people. And he just twists, torments them, leads in Rick and a few friends, and really just goes, yeah, we're totally buddy. Hey, guy. Hey, we got this. You and me. We got this. And then just that huge knife just comes right in the back, and you just, like, the, the amount of torture and pain he causes, the suffering that is happening when the world is already in such turmoil, just makes him <coughs> make my list of top five. I just, I, he has to be in there. He's a scary guy. I don't like that. Um, number three for me. Number three. One, two, three. Three, three, three. Um, number three for me is actually uh, from a video game. 
Uh, it is from Silent Hill. It is the villain Pyramid Head. Oh, he's a good one. He's I I had to like I we kind of discussed the show a little bit before we actually go on air. That way we don't look like we're completely unprepared for these kind of things. And I, I saw Adam's list and I was like I was like horror movie villains I can't do because I don't have like my top five favorite, but I have my top but, five. But you know like, I I am the horror guy so, the or, horror and the guy. movie guy, so you, there you go. You know it, and I'm I'm I love my video games and love my comic books, and I can't help it, and I love my Adventure Time T-shirt. And that's um, why we are together in Nerdorama. I know that we just we fill the whole nerd spectrum. We'd like to think it's a match uh, made in nerd heaven of horror. Mm, enter your cheat codes now, kids. Up, uh, up, down, down. Left, right, left, right. B A stone. Oh, we get it. Uh, but Pyramid Head scared the crap out of me. The, this is a man who. One has a tetrahedron on his head. Freaks me out as it is. It is. It is a freaky thing. The first time you see it, like, wow! Now that what? is that is something creepy and crazy. And he's I, like twenty feet tall. Yeah, twenty feet tall. Well, he's he's like he's like a, he's like saw like nine ten yeah. or something crazy. Yeah. And he's just carrying around this giant freaking bloody sword. But the first time you see him, he's freaking just like ramming into a freaking. Uh, it's like a mannequin and just like like destroying it, raping it. I don't even know. Yeah. And it scares the hell out of you because you're you're doing this all. From the look aspect of your character in a closet, just looking out, going, "Oh my goodness, I'm in his apartment." Oh, that that explains all these dead bodies in here. Oh, 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 yeah, that's bleeding. That's bleeding. It's just him going, <laughs> killing all the things. And every time you see him, you just go, "I don't have any response to kill that right now." Um, run, 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 run. <laughs> and he just, it was a, it was a video game character that you just, you saw, and you just had, you had nothing really to do with him. And he was just so terrifying, and every time you had to even catch a glimpse of him, and you just you were so amazed by him because in Silent Hill, it's like there are monsters that just yeah you know, maybe permanently kill you just instantly, boom, you're done. And he was just someone who freaked you the heck out, and it was just it scared me. Um, so on to my number two, number two, Dedos. Um, number two for me is uh, I my kind of my cop out too. It's a throwback to horror. I have to do it, Freddy. Oh yeah, Freddy. Yeah, he has to make my list. Uh, well, Freddie <laughs> Freddy holds a special place in my heart, too. He always will. As opposed, it. you know, I, I dressed like him last week. Of course, there you go, right? But no, he's just, he has to make my list. And at number two, Nightmare on Elm Street, beautiful movie. Excuse me, tell me, Torrent of Blood from- Torrent bed. of Johnny Depp's bed. Dor- yeah, exactly. But once again, uh, the, re- the main reason why Freddie gets on my list um, above other, you know, like Jason, anything like that. I, Jason, bet, I, could, I bet I could guess, too. What do you got? That he, he is a wise-cracking- just I, jerk no, off. No. No? No. No. Okay. I don't I, I, I like I like the Freddy that was just terrifying and scary and witty, yes, but witty to like the the kind of like a grim fairy tale kind of witty. Okay. Like yeah. very like dark and like like, hey kids, wanna come out and play? <laughs> and you're like, he's gonna kill me anyway. Like I might as well just go out there and have fun. Like Yeah, okay. he he plays with his prey. Exactly. And it's kinda of fun to watch that, but at the same time you're just like, I hope that never ever happens to me. <laughs> and but no, the reason why he makes it on my number two spot, and it's kind of the same reason the plant from the ruins makes it on my number two spot, is the pure fact that Freddy is a person you have no defense against. Yes, you have your own dreams. You have your That's own true, thoughts, true. You're in his realm. You're in his realm. He is the master of nightmares and dreams, and literally he can do whatever he would like to your soul and just rip it out of your body. You die while you're sleeping. And your biggest defense is, don't sleep. <laughs> he's that for the first like three days like, you mean if you die in your sleep you die in real life it's like they planned it that way wait a second but no it's just you have like Jason I mean say what you want about Jason but sooner or later I'm gonna get in a Hummer run that guy over and just not stop driving until I, I'm done I'm gonna go into a boat and just hopefully he never ever shows up again or uh, you know um, Michael Myers I'm just not gonna live in that town like I'm <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna live there just I'm um, Real estate property, it's just going down, I'm moving out. Freddy, you change <laughs> towns, you change names, you leave, you change a different area code, you still have the same dreams. <laughs> Scream, you just don't answer the phone. <laughs> Scream, you just like, hey, what's up? And you're like, no, 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 no. Bye. <laughs> Click. Because um, we hang up phones nowadays like <laughs> that. <laughs> well, we just, beep. Yeah. Um, like, like, there's so many horror villains or horror scenarios, like Hostel or something like that. You just don't go to these places, or you don't, you don't, you can outrun the villain. You're like, you're like, you don't need to investigate these murders. Like, it's not a really big yeah. deal, man. You don't need, you're not Sherlock Holmes. You're not the, you're Mr., you know, you're not in your Mr. Machine. You're not doing anything crazy. Like Freddy, there's no defense. If he just doesn't like you, he's going to be in your dream every single night until he kills you. And you're just like, that's, that's wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Freddy. I love you. Um, one thing I did yeah. like, one thing I did like about the whole horror genre, or the whole uh, Nightmare on Elm Street series, and mm-hmm. I went into this a little bit on the extras last week, was, um, it was really underrated. Was Wes Craven's New Nightmare, yeah. and I believe that that's like you could go from number one 
number three to New Nightmare and have an incredible story because it just it it takes it takes the Nightmare on Elm Street movie and puts it in real life because oh, yeah. it's it's the actors playing themselves. Yeah, and Freddy's coming into the real world. I didn't mean to jump in on that, but no, I no, just, it's, it's... I, I I try to defend I try to defend New Nightmare as much as possible because <laughs> people need to see this movie. If you like if you like the first Nightmare on Elm Street, at least the first one or the third one, the third one you know being the the sci fi one. Oh yes, do, with, do, do. yes, with the Dawkins soundtrack. Mm-hmm. But uh, okay, so what is your number two? Uh, that was my number two. What is your number one? <laughs> Turn to count. Dang it. I don't remember. Uh, it's my, the accident. It's it's the that's not that's right there on your screen. You have my script right there. I have accident eyes. I can't even. I have no response. To that's that. right. When you're in a car accident, you're in a car accident. Okay, so Josh's number one. Number one. That's right. Uh, mm. <laughs> Uh, my number one is actually a uh, another video game villain. Uh, my number one is Nemesis from Resident Evil Three. Uh, reason because, no comment. I'm sorry. You can hate me all you. Wait, I do have a comment. Want. Stars. Stars. <laughs> say what you will, but at the time that game came out, I want to say, and I could be wrong. I was about thirteen when I actually played that game. You could no, be wrong about being thirteen. Uh, I'd be wrong about being thirteen. I, I was thirteen or fifteen, somewhere like somewhere around that range of areas. <coughs> um. Uh. But I. I was playing Resident Evil. I had played Resident Evil 1. I played Resident Evil 2. It was great. But at the same time, I always had that sense of control. And it's something... Resident Evil is still one of my favorite franchises and favorite things to play. And it's a horror franchise, first and foremost. And it really does spawn good villains and kind of like this kind of demonic company. And you kind of really hate them. And they do a good job of making you hate things. Um, and, but, and Resident Evil 1 and 2, and even like Code Veronica and uh, Survivor and all these other things, you always had that sense of feeling that you had control over the game. You could choose to go in that room, or you could choose to cho- stay in this room that you just killed three zombies in, and you're not really worried about them getting up for a little bit. You can kind of go, <sighs> okay, there's no liquors in here. There's no chance. I'm just in the hallway. Nothing can break in. I could leave my game not unpaused, and I kind of think I'd be a little safe. You'd had, you had to get that false sense of security. In Resident Evil 3, there were times where you'd walk in, and it, the music <coughs> would kind of go down and kind of play the happy music, and whenever you hear the happy music from the other two games or Code Veronica, you're like, this is good time. I'm going to start looking at documents and reading things and learning about <laughs> the Umbrella Corporation. And you're sitting there, you're like, whew, don't worry about there. There's a save chest in here and a typewriter. I'm totally great. There's no way nothing about You're just walking over, you're like, hey, typewriter, I got a magic ink reel for you because that's how I save. And boom, crashing through the window. Nemesis. Stars. Running through there machine gun at the ready or coming at you just going to punch you in the face and it's like what would you like to do deet, deet, deet. And it's like jump out the window try and fight him run for your freaking life you idiot just stop reading this text and you're just like uh, uh, oh my, oh my. You're just that slow pace like and you don't get that a lot in horror anymore even, even no that's tr- that's even- my, that's my problem with the resident evil games anymore it's not scary no 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 they're not it's not survival horror anymore it's, it's just action horror exactly it's just running gun boom 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 zombies and you're playing like Dead Rising or you're playing Dead Island or one of those other like kind of running gun zombie games. I did enjoy Dead Island. Dead Island's a good game, but it's not scary. No. It's just it's just running gun with zombies. They could be mutated twenty eight days later rage patients. And you wouldn't notice it. Not zombies. Not zombies, kids. Um but no, like Resident Evil Three, and it's something horror has lost, in my opinion, for today, is that kind of like slow, purposeful walk that villains can do. That kind of like like when you have a claw or like a um like a, a knife or a sword, and you're kind of just like, doom, 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 just walking down a hallway, and there's some blonde girl just screaming her brains out, peeing herself, and you just like drag it across the ground, it's like, and has that like really just menacing sound, and just incites fear, and you're like, girl, 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 don't go in that bedroom, girl, run down the hallway, girl, what are you doing, mm, mm. and you got to go there with like all your friends to equal and such, and they just, they're going to scream out, like, oh my god, I saw that, and I'm the same way, I'm right there next to them, like, oh my god, in other words, the slasher movie is dead, and it, we need to resurrect it. It really is, and even that though is like you look at the old movies too, and it's like like even the old Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead. You look at that, and those zombies, uh, 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 brains. Yeah, and they're brains. they're they're nothing by themselves, yeah, but they're nothing. But they hoard up on you. Yeah, and you're really afraid of that. You're terrified of that, and that's one thing Nemesis really brought to Resident Evil Three was it was that slow pace, that meaningful walk that was like. You could always choose at any point in time, pull out your combat knife and pistol or shotgun or however far in you were the grenade launch or whatever, and choose, bink, 
fight this guy <laughs> right here, right now. We're not saving it for the ending. I'm not waiting until I get my RPG or my magical weapon that's going to kill him. I'm going to fight this freaking guy right now. And you had the choice every single time, but it was that walk, that terrifying, menacing stars. Just walk that he would do. The and nothing it, nothing to lose. I'm going to come yeah, after the, you no matter what the, walk. The come at me bro before there was a come at me bro in video games where he would just literally wait for you. And there were times you had enough time to really think, look at all three options, read it all, look around the room, kind of, kind of just be like, what do I want to choose? What do I want to choose? What do I want to choose? Do I want to go in the office? Do I want to try and defend that? Do I run over there? I know there's shotgun ammo on the shelf. I can run and get that before he comes and gets me. And you had time to think about what your decisions were, and it terrified the hell out of you. You felt like a field mouse just running around and trying to find a piece of cheese. You had nothing to defend yourself against this guy with a, a rat trap. Like, you just had no defense against it. And you look at, like, Romero movies today. And what is there? There's sprinting zombies. Zombies that are missing, like, freaking, like, their, their, uh, their hamstring or their, uh, their missing arms. And they're really torn up. They have a shotgun blaster to them. And they're just running full speed down at these freaking action heroes. They're just like, you got to shoot them in the head. And you're like, really? And, and what, like, bo- what bothers me is people are falling for it. They're like, yeah. oh, yeah, they're so much better than the slow zombies. These they're scarier. Zombies. They're I'm like, the they, may be, gore. they may be, they may be, they may be, I don't know. I just. I hate it. I mean, yeah, that's that's why Nemesis makes my horror opinion. movies. Even, horror movies don't necessarily have to be intense. The creepier, in my opinion, the better. Exactly, it's what draws you in. And yeah, as a, as a gamer, as someone who reads comic books, as someone who watches these movies, like it's always the slow villains, the one who they just so like you said, self assured that they're not going to die. That pistol in your pocket, that rocket launcher, whatever you got at me, shoot it. I'm going to give you time to shoot it. I'm not going to dodge. I'm not going to move. I'm just going to walk at you because I'm Jason. I'm uh, you know, I'm Freddy, I'm Nemesis, <coughs> I'm Pyramid Head. Whatever you have, like, you know, I'm Candyman for freaking sake. Well, like, even even like, even like even like Pinhead, he doesn't go after anyone. Yeah. They come to him. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's all the power of temptation with the box. Oh, yes. It's like, well, I'm not going to do anything. You just come to me and I'll I'll make your day really bad. Exactly. And it's just it's something that those villains really just it was something that really like as a kid I was just, I I was able to identify and that's why he makes the top of my list is he was the first thing that I really identified and really made me look back at movies and go, these guys are crazy, not because they're murdering people or skinning or flaying people, it's because they just know how much and they've realized how much evil power they have. Right. And how much, that, that nothing you can do, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, no matter how prepared you think you are, you are never prepared. Like, they're just there for you and they're there to just kill you. Yes. And you're going to kill you again, you're going to load up your last save file, kill you again, or if you're a kid, they're going to kill you in your cabin, and then they're going to kill your friend, and then they're going to kill the virgin last because she always makes it till the end. I just, and I hate that. I hate that horror movies has lost that. And yeah. I, that's why I kind of I miss the statement. I miss the cliche. I really do. I love that. I love it, that. It, like, it was a formula that people loved and worked for. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it was like, all right, so, yes, it's nothing new. We don't no, need no, no, no. new. We don't need new. Not always. Speaking of bad, mm-hmm. going into another segue, uh, list number two. Segue. That's right. Uh, we went into our favorites. We did our favorites. Is great. Um, now it's the stuff that makes us mad. The stuff that uh, makes us okay. Our top five. Hold on. Hold on. My Little Ponies. You know what you did, and you make me very mad. <laughs> okay. I what don't know what that. I don't know what that means, but it was a vendetta. Okay. Um, actually, I like the show. It just, I do. I do too. It's, it makes me hurt. You know, the Powerpuff Girls people just made yeah. the show great. In fact, my new my new it's, Facebook picture is of Doctor Hooves. Yeah. Yeah, that just happened, kids. Yeah, it did. Yeah, we got a brony. Yeah. And I, I I, I, would say and make up some false child that I'm watching the show with, but no, it's just me. No come at me brony, huh? No. Okay. I got no come at or me brony. Or a cool story brony? No, I got nothing like that. I okay. just, uh, I will say it's a good show, and I will say that uh, Discord lives on the moon, and he's a cool dragon. And Check it out on the hub. Yeah. Anyway. Or Netflix. Let's. Let's uh let's delve into our top five uh least favorite or worst horror movies. The worst horror movies of all time? Uh just yeah, well yeah, our, okay. our the, the ones that we consider the worst movie. Okay. Um okay, okay. this was really hard for me because I have a very, very big opinion over everything. Yes. Um Love of horror, of course. Um this is a series of movies that made the, the list uh after after well you know, I have to I was gonna change it, but uh Originally, my number five. Number five. Number one, two, three, four. 
my number five were the Leprechaun in the movies. Uh, Leprechaun, <laughs> Leprechaun f- in the hood, bro. Leprechaun 4 in space. Mm. Leprechaun in the hood. Leprechaun back to the hood. But uh, I'm going to have to go with the entire Leprechaun series. Just in uh, general? Even, even the first one had Jennifer Aww. Aniston in it. Um, and she's not necessarily the best actor, but she, you know, she was. She's a, an actress. Yes. First and foremost, so she's a terrible actor. She doesn't even <laughs> have the calls for it. I mean, come well, on. Well, they're, they're called female actors now. Yeah. Oh. Welcome to. Welcome to politically correct world i don't do but, that but uh yeah warwick davis i guess needed a really big paycheck after after he did willow even though i love willow we should do an entire show on willow mm, but um that's just we'll, we'll think about it we'll, yeah it's on the table, uh, it's on the table and these I'm just gonna push it off right these now. these leprechaun movies are just they, they're cashing in on the on the mid to late 90s uh uh monster uh starring in horror movies mm. um they just weren't good well it's a you look at when they the weren't even, came out, though. They weren't even, like, fun good. You no, know? no, no. They weren't good but because it was the studio looking at it and seeing Freddy, seeing Jason, exactly. seeing all these big villains, and they're like, this leprechaun gay, we can totally make him the new Jason. I don't know how they talk. I think it was a <laughs> Swedish film, but I'm not sure. He's leprechaun. He's leprechaun. He's, they he's, weren't even Irish. I don't even know. We're bad at this. <laughs> yes. Nerdorama, we don't do impressions. <laughs> God dang it. We do do impressions. We just don't do them well. Do-do. You said it. So, Again. number four. No comma. Number four, I had a big problem with. Um, let me put this out in front first. Okay. I adore Eli Roth oh. for one movie. Okay. The yeah. movie is Cabin Fever. Okay. That's not my number four, by the way. This is this is this is this is a build this is a build up. Um, Cabin Fever made my list on extras. Um, okay. Cabin Fever brought gore back to horror, and okay. I I I would give this guy a raging Hummer for that. Um, I mean, he. <laughs> Eli, <laughs> it's on record. He'll do it. Um, we just he brought you and he, me. We get him on it. He brought the mm. '80s back into horror with Cabin Fever, skin falling off, the razor scene. It was yeah. great. Then he went and did the Hostel movies, which aren't horror. They were just torture porn. <laughs> I'm, torture porn. I believe. I believe next week I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have a thing about torture porn and how really? it's kind of destroying movies. I really hope that video will never come back again. That we had to watch one episode. An oh. episode that didn't exist, kids. Don't ever go see it. Oh yeah, please don't. No, he will hate you. Yes. Um, but he produced and put his name on this piece of garbage movie in the in the new in the new in the new world of of horror movies. Everything is POV now. Shaky cam. Yeah. Let's let's Cloverfield. Let's let's. Oh, I love Cloverfield, but I'm not going to go into that either because <laughs> I'm I'm also in a minority with that. The movie <laughs> the movie is The Last Exorcism. Yeah, it's about this. It's about this guy who's given up on. Uh, er, no, no, I'm gonna go wrong on that. He's a. Uh, I don't even remember. Was he given up on his faith? Did you see the movie? No. Okay. Uh, I, it, it was. It was a documented movie about this. About the. It. About this guy, and he. Um, I'm gonna just bypass that and continue talking. <laughs> he uh, investigated this. This. This house of this. This. This family and the little girl was supposed to be possessed and all this stuff. I'm not going to go into it because I hated this movie. I hated it with a passion. And not the passion of the Christ. No, with the passion of the Antichrist. <laughs> because it's a scary last exorcism movie? That's right, because it's an exorcism movie. Yeah, oh, I went I into it. that. Um, do not see this movie. If you like exorcism movies, if you like POV movies, and there are people out there that do, because uh, I got more movies to talk about. Yeah, just uh, let's walk right along that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Number three. Okay, yes. Uh, just stay away from the last exorcism, even though it's got Eli Ross name on it. He he hey. you know, he he had faith in the movie. It's not really no, his no, no. fault. It's not his fault. No, so no, no excuses. Number three. Number when we, three. When we say number three, we just drop it like a karate chop. We don't want to ruin Eli Lo- Eli Roth's career anymore. All right. Number three <laughs> is the movie everyone loves is 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 listed as the best worst movie. I don't know why I cannot watch this movie and be like, "Oh, this is great! This is a midnight movie." Everyone, everyone, comment and all this stuff. It is a truly horrible movie, mm-hmm. and um, in fact, they made a documentary about it called "Best Worst Movie." Uh, I cannot watch Wait. it. I cannot watch it without riff tracks. Is this uh, is this Manos Hands of Fate? No, it is worse than Manos the Hands of Fate. It is, <laughs> it is Troll Two. Is it because it's so trolly? No. Oh no! It, <laughs> it's, I did there? it's actually it was actually made by a German guy. It had nothing to do with trolls. It's all about goblins. It's about this family who goes to this town called Nilbog, wait, 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 which wait, is wait. goblin backwards. backwards. Yeah. I was gonna say, isn't it the movie with the name that's flipped around? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is a truly terrible movie. It is not. 
it's not even worthy of a midnight movie. It's not it's not even the room worthy. It's it's, it's worse bad. than that. Yeah, it's got the worst acting. Um it's the the documentary's fantastic though. The documentary best worst movie because mm-hmm. it's about like the the cultural influence that this movie had and and the the cult standing uh this movie had. But uh stay away from the movie itself unless you watch the Rift Tracks version. I actually own the movie because of the Rift Tracks. I own it on Blu-ray because it exists on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. This movie exists on Blu-ray. Yeah, but they're doing that with everything. You can't you can't really blame that. I'm I'm pretty sure like all the old Supermans are now on Blu-ray. Yes, I have like, those as well. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Okay. But um but everything's on Blu-ray now. Uh, really as much important. as I hate the movie, I I bought it for the Rift Tracks. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh yeah. Don't do that. Um hypocritical maybe? No, no, not at all. Okay. Critical Adam. <clears throat> Or my, never go together. My number two. Number two. Number de dos. Back in, what was it, 2000, 2001? I don't, I don't remember when the first one yet. came out. Uh, there, was, there was this movie based on okay. a video game. Okay. Based on a video game about zombies. Okay, I'm not following you yet. Uh, called Resident Evil. Yeah, great movie, right? Uh, this movie, this first movie, um, was the rebirth of the zombie films. Yeah, I'd say so. In my opinion, one of the most fantastic zombie movies that has come out after uh, after the the Romero dead movies, after the Fulci zombie movies. If you yeah. haven't seen any of the Italian zombie movies, Z O M B I, yeah. see them now. They're good. Especially you, Pete. If you're watching, Zombie One has a zombie fighting a shark. Fights a flipping shark. But anyway, um, love love the first Resident Evil movie. Love the soundtrack. The score. The score done by Marilyn Manson himself. Fantastic score. Nice. Um, <clears throat> had some good remixes on it. Um, great, great visuals, great sound effects. The liquor was a little too CG, but it was early. It was early still in the 2000s. So I was excited to see Paul W.S. Anderson's uh, f- follow-up, Resident Evil 2. Horrible movie. Awful, <laughs> awful movie. I was like, great, another zombie movie, and it takes place in Raccoon City, yeah. and it has all these characters that I love. Where are the zombies? Um, th- there were zombies, and then there was a guy with two golden guns. Stars. Yeah. So hey. everything from Resident <laughs> Evil two to where it is now, I didn't even go see the, the new one. I was going to, I, to just to rip it apart one. for the show. Yeah. I was going to do it for you, but Aww. I couldn't even do it. Um, Aww. so my number two is Resident Evil two on. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, but Mila Jovovich is so hot, and I love watching her. I was like... Hey, I said that. I know. Everyone says like, that. I'm like, why would you... Hot, man, but, what do you want to say? But have her, have her do something good. Have her do, you know, another Fifth Element movie. Oh, Everyone yes. would love to see that. I, I would, know that. Please. Or please, Bruce Willis. Or Cuffs. Please. Or Cuffs, too. Yeah, <laughs> I went there. <laughs> cuffs. <clears throat> but that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got I to gotta stop there and a little interjection. Resident Evil 1, amazing. Had a little creepy kid. Right. All the rules of horror. Creepy. Had, had the slow zombies. Had the slow zombies that knew that you weren't going to kill them anyway. And, but yeah, it's, you look at Resident Evil 2 and you look at what the movies have become. I love Nemesis. Don't get me wrong. They go all hard on for Nemesis because he's freaky and what he actually, it was more his, his presence that he brought in the game. But what you see now and for the movies, it's more mutants, mega powers, dinosaurs. Blasts. Yeah, dinosaurs. Crazy Wesker flying around doing monkey grip, punching kung fu. You know what else I loved about the first Resident Evil? I have to cut it because it's yeah, just the lasers. Yeah, the remember laser the doors? lasers? That was awesome. Yeah, they, they people getting things. sliced and diced. New ideas. I love them. gore. <laughs> so, so what do we have for number one? Number one. If anybody knows me, and they do, they know what my number one is because all I can do is bitch about it. Especially this upcoming week with the release of the new one. Paranormal Activity, <laughs> one of the funniest horror movies I have ever seen. It is the worst horror movie I have. I fell for the I fell for the uh, the ad campaign when the first movie came out. They're like they're like go on this website, demand that you see this horror movie, demand that they release it. So I'm like I'm gonna go to the theater and see it. And um, yeah, I was the only one in the theater laughing my head off. Everyone else I think was asleep though. So it was. I mean. <laughs> It was such a terrible movie, and but it's pe- based on a true story. It can't be bad. Uh, people are falling. People are falling for these movies, and 
seriously, folks, if you stop seeing these movies, they will stop making them. If they stop making money, they will stop making them. And you, trust me, you want this to happen. Do we? Yeah. Um, when we went to see Dread and the, the, the trailer mm. for Paranormal Activity 4 came on, everybody in the theater was like, they made a three? <laughs> That's our first question. Yeah. And it's I like it's like nobody pays attention to these movies. It, they're, they're, they're popping they're, them out like they're Saw movies. Like, yeah. It's like, here's Saw 12. You're like, there's 11 and 10? What? What? what, what? It's just I, I I I'm completely out of the so I there. yeah I might I might go on uh if if you like the paranormal activity movies you might not want to watch uh, the extras this week yeah. um unless unless you do like real horror and you want to experience horror and madness you're a red blooded American who loves horror America 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 I'm only um, doing this because the election's coming around so I have to be like America yeah we're not gonna go into that no we're not going into it but I'm just saying yeah. America people know why so that's my number one um. Number one. Wow, we are really going far in this. Uh, I know this we episode. Really this is great. If you're still, if you're watching and you're having a good time, please let us know at seven two seven four nine three two zero five five, or post it on our Facebook, or post or it on our Twitter, Facebook, on Twitter at nerd right now, underscore no. Odaba. Yes. Oh, no. If you're listening and you know our one of our numbers, give us a text. We have our phones uh, ready. On the ready. Uh, um, not not. Uh, we don't have them on. Uh, I that's bad. That's bad radio etiquette. We don't have our ringers on. Wait what? Oh 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 on ringer. Yeah no no none of that. Uh, so uh, <laughs> but, um, let's uh, get into your top five least favorite horror movies. Some no, of these I, I don't I, agree with. Too. I don't I don't. I'm sorry. I just I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. This is my top five worst horror movies. Um, my number five, Hostel. Ha! Eli Roth. I'm sorry. I didn't like. By hostile. the way, by the way, you spelled it hostile. I did ho- spell it hostile because I was angry about it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't like Hostel for the pure fact that it was one of those movies that after I got through how intense the gore could be, things with the eyeballs, things with like all these like really good practical makeup effects, it was good. But it was good as like a gore movie. Torture like, porn. Exactly. Like more torture. Not a horror movie. It, yeah. I, like when the first one came out, I was like excited. It was Eli Roth. I was just excited to go see it. I'm like, hell yeah. I'm going to go see a horror movie today. I'm going to get freaked the hell out. I'm going to have a cold sweat running down my body. I'm just going to shake and shudder, and I'm not going to know what to do with myself afterwards. And I go in there, I'm just like, and they're cutting his skin off, and they're cutting his leg open. We have, we have a request. Oh, we um, I, I, I told my friend Allison how you like doing Bane's voice. <laughs> and uh, she, wants, mm. she wants you to do your list as Bane. Oh, I do it as the Bane? Or at least, uh, um, well, let's compromise. Well, do the, do the rest of your hostel as Bane. Okay, so you see that there was once a hostile, and the hostile was a man, and the man was abducted. (laughs) It was quite good. He was abducted in a hostile, which they do refer to as, well, (laughs) hotels over there. You think the hostile is your friend. But I once had a room in a hostile. So with that, he did go... Eaten venom. <laughs> and, uh, he did have that hostile and was completely murdered in there, and it was nothing to do with horror at all. Batman, you think that horror is your friend, but I was here born with horror. That's me. Uh, I'm just go- I goof off with Bane. I don't know. I do little yeah, funny that, impressions. And that was that, that wasn't as good as you normally do. But no, no, I'm just I'm under pressure. I'm just like I'm not expected to do it. That's okay. I'm sorry. I, I hope I, I, I go I go I go around bragging on you. So oh, please don't do that. Yeah, I'm I'm here to disappoint. I'm gonna stop from now on. Okay, thanks. <laughs> but number four. Number four. <sighs> the ghost ship. Now that's one I do disagree with. I'm I'm sorry. It's it's uh, it's a bad horror movie, but I didn't think it was a bad movie. I know, and you are the one who made the list. And <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you make these lists, but I once made a list. You think the um, lists are your friends? You think the lists are your friends? No, um, no. Ghost Ship was on my top worst horror movies of all time. <laughs> Not worst movies. Um, worst horror because it was a movie like you have had it with yours, where I actually found myself laughing and giggling yeah. a little bit about the plot. It's just like, yes, we need to go into this ghost ship. <laughs> Why? There's, there's no, re- and the ghosts are still alive, and they're still like very petty, and like they don't, they're having like interactions with people, and they don't really care about killing anybody really, but they kind of do, but they don't, and their souls on the boat, and it's all very convoluted, and there's not <coughs> enough like scary moments in the movie to really care about it. Like you have a movie like um, I'll throw another one out there, like Thirteen Ghosts. Thirteen Ghosts. I love Thirteen Ghosts. Like, yeah, it's good. You actually care about each and every ghost, and when you finally see the like the what is it, the maniac, the slugger guy, the guy with the baseball bat. Yeah. Like it scares the living pants off you. Like you're just frightened as hell to go see that, and like it's just one of those movies that you're just 
you know, you, it's terrifying. Ghost ship, not at all. I'm like, <laughs> these guys are having a great time. Well, they, they Casper's kind of, gonna show up. Is gonna be friendly. It's gonna be great. <laughs> they kind, they kind of, they kind of marketed it wrong too. They, they kind of marketed it like it would took. It was like right after Event Horizon. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's gonna be Event Horizon on the water, and yeah. it's not. It's not technically a horror movie. It's a just a creepy ghost movie. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. And like even going into it, seeing the movie posters, what you see. Oh yeah, you the, see the ship with a skull the on it. Skull, like that's. That's metal. That's like that's old horror. Like that's skull on the freaking year. Tenacious D. Sorry, I love Tenacious D. Yeah, I'm just gonna. All right, so so number number three. Number three for Josh, because I just like getting proven wrong today. For me, it's the entire Wrong Turn series. Now, I agree. Oh really? Yes. (laughs) Those are awful movies. (laughs) People watching, (sighs) you think the Adam is your friend, but he's my friend. (laughs) <laughs> um, but no, the entire Wrong Turn series, I just, hillbillies out in the middle of nowhere, redneck inbreeding, funniest freaking, like, two or three hours I can spend of my life watching it. Uh, the next almost is, as funny as Paranormal Activity. <laughs> almost as funny. Uh, there's times in, like, the, the, the sequels where they, they go through it, and they're like, hey, <laughs> man, POV, because they're on a game show or some crazy <laughs> thing. And like, oh, my God, how are you going to deal with rednecks? They're freaking rednecks. One of them literally has a gimp arm. And he's killing you with a machete. Are you stupid? Like, literally, some of these kids in the Wrong Turn series movies are like, I'm a pro athlete with, like, (laughs) a million-dollar scholarship to go play for the NFL. This is my character bio that they cheaply do in the very beginning of every movie. Oh, look, first five minutes, I twist my ankle. Oh, God, I don't know how to deal with this. Like, you're an NFL, like, this is your entire thing. Like, you should be like, I was born for this, and just, like, start going through the jungle and just, like, murdering hillbillies. Like... How are there that many hillbillies to murder innocent teenagers? I don't understand it. It's hilarious. And the interactions between it is like, there's a, I think it was Wrong Turn 2. I've seen all of them because a friend of mine, who shall remain nameless, Holly. I know. <clears throat> loves all of them and loves watching them and thinks they're hilariously fun to watch and they're good horror movies. And I want to sit there and take a needle to my eyeball, which anyone who knows me knows that I hate touching my eyeballs, but I'll do it. I don't care. It'll freak me out, but I'll be like, mm, and just go for it. Because the Wrong Turn series is a laugh. It's a joke. It's a joke on itself, which is the worst one. But there's, a, there's an interaction in the following where the guy actually meets, like, the father. Like, the, the guy who started all the inbreeding and getting up under my heels. And he makes like, that noise, too. Yeah, and he's just like, he's like, well, we had to keep the family safe. And he's like, the black guy's like, wait, the family? Oh, God, you have a shotgun. Like, really? He didn't see it coming. He's the only old man that lives in the woods that you know has cannibals in it. He's completely okay. Like, how can you make... Like, it, that's what makes me angry, really. And that's <coughs> one of the biggest reasons why it's on my list is the fact that never has there been a series of movies where, one, I did not care anything about the villains at all. I cared nothing about the, the, the redneck zombie murdering mutant freakies. But never has there been, in my opinion, a movie where there has been stupider, like, stupider survivors. Like... The, the the people who are going there to get murdered are literally like sheep to the slaughter. They're just like, oh yes, we're. It's not, it's not like it's not like literally they're wheeling out like a paraplegic who's just like beep 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 beep. Oh. Like these people can defend themselves. Like they're giving them full written backstories. Like he's the football player and he's this guy who who's really good with technology. In the very beginning of the movie, he rebuilds a radio and he's he's like, hey, look what I did with this free time. Oh my god, I hacked a computer server once. Yeah, man, I know some stuff. Government's re- legit, whatever. And they flesh out their backstories cheaply. They're, they have them, each, each person introduces themselves like every movie to the rest of the group because they're, they're friends, but they're kind of friends of friends or they're on a TV game show or something stupid like that. Some little like stupid plot train device um, to get these kids out in this murderous cannibal woods. And people just keep going to these woods. <laughs> There's so many wrong turns. I don't even want to start. Um, wow, this is your number three. This is my number three. I just I have a searing hatred of passion for this movie. And that's 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 where I'm at with that. I I wanted to get intense for it, folks watching at home, and see me get physically angry and just red lanterning. Um, as anyone who knows me, because I'll make Green Lantern references all day. Um, I wanted to kind of get give it its just cause for how bad these <coughs> movies are because of the fact that it's an entire series. It's not just one movie; it's several, and they're all crap. Okay, thank you. Moving on. Josh is number two. Number two, and I and I love to hate this movie too. This okay. is great. I hate. With a passion, hold on, not of Christ, not of Satan, not of anything, not of the Batman. Uh, literally, I freaking hate Jack Frost. 
Not <laughs> not the Michael Keaton family film, by the way. No, no. There was a horror film, let me remind you all, about a killer snowman. No, not Frosty. No, he's cool. Jack Happy Frost. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Let me put my hat on. Um, oh, God. Uh, but no, I'm going to have to watch that movie now because I really actually love Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> um, but uh, no, Jack Frost, a movie where literally the movie is crap. The, it's claymation for the, for the big enemy, the one you're supposed to be afraid of. This is a man made out of flipping snow. Like, I'm not going to use the F-bomb, kids. <coughs> it doesn't deserve it. It does not deserve my respect for how much I love to use the F-bomb. It is a flipping bad movie. It is a bad movie. I'm going to point at the screen because that's where the freaking name of the screen is. Right yeah, there. it's right there. Right there. It's right there. Jack Frost. Da, 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 da. Just how I wrote it. And I hate that movie with a passion because it's, it's cheesy. It's crappy. There's never an ounce of me to ever be scared. And at one point in the movie, a girl is taking a steaming hot <laughs> bath. I like it because she's naked. And I'm like, hey, boobies. Because I'm a man and I can't help it, and it's a certain man. Nothing. There's nobody on this world that doesn't like boobies. I'm just saying. By the way, love boobies. By the way, October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So. Keep your boobies safe. But um, <laughs> King. um, but no, Jack Frost. Take this is a snowman, a man made of snow, a man that if his core temperature heats to above, I believe it's 44 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, not Celsius, that he will begin to melt and become a watery puddle of who gives a crap because he's not a good villain. And he appears into a scolding hot bath, completely destroying any element of actual physical possibility realm that he could be an evil snowman. Comes up, forms the bath, forms into it, pulls the girl up, she's naked, and just starts doing her with his carrot nose. Really? Like, yeah. I want to see the Freddy movie where he's just like, I'm going to kill you, but first, I'm going to rape the crap out of you. With, <laughs> with this claw. With this claw. Yeah. 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 Like, Really? Like, this is your movie. Your movie is a carrot banging a really hot actress. Like, that's that's what you've got. That's all you've got for me. That's really... Okay, that's... That, oh, that's... Go on. No, that's it? It's just it's just a snowman running around. No one thought to bring... Plug in the hairdryer. Like, it's, it's bad when your villain can't deal with, the, like, the heat in a room. Or shouldn't be able to. And it's just a poorly executed movie. There's no realistic effects. There's <coughs> nothing good about that movie that I could ever find, other than the the fact that there was a big name actress who had a uh, scene where her butt was shown, and you were still as a little kid like, mm, this movie. I gotta watch this like three more times to torture myself. No, screw that. I will download the pictures now. But that's it. I'm not watching the movie. Again. <laughs> I mean, obviously you're gonna want to see celebrities naked. That's that's half the part of being a nerd. Not half. I'll say like an eighth or a twenty fifth. But someone always wants to see a naked celebrity because they're naked. But Jack Frost is not a good freaking movie ever. No. All right, so we're no. moving on because I'm going well, to can rant. If you're that pa- passionate about your number two, I can't wait to hear your n- number one. Josh's number one. Least favorite, worst horror movie ever made. Ever made. I don't know why they produced it. It was the worst horror movie ever. Oliver and Company. That cartoon was a terrible horror movie. It was bad. It was, it was funny. <laughs> it it made me care about a little kitty that was orange. It was entertaining. It was adorable. They they tried to bring you into it, and they're like, in a city that a kitty can't survive, how will he ever do it with the help of his dog friends? And you're like, oh my goodness, this kitty's going to get mangled, just shredded to pieces. I saw the trailer. The trailer has this really mean guy who's like smoking in a freaking limo, and he looks terrifying. He's like the claw from Inspector Gadget. That freaked me out as a little kid. I was like, oh my, I don't even know what to do. And I was like, I was like this is going to be a great horror movie. Went into it. The Dovermans aren't even scary. They like beat up the, the entire crew once and then they like get outwitted at the end of it. Do by, you like he- a chihuahua? Do I'm you like, hear this, Disney? You are not making any good horror movies. You suck. You know, I went to the haunted mansion, not scared anymore. I go through the mirror and I'm just like, man, I look younger now. <laughs> mm, I'm looking good with all these wrinkles. Like, Disney does a crap job of scary. That was a terrible horror movie. That's my it's my number one, just I can't stand it. Like I, I watch it all the time because it's a great comedy. And I really love that orange cat. Do you but, watch it? Do you watching during uh, Halloween just because? Yeah, you, know, you, you try, I watch it. I you watch try it to 30th. believe it is a good horror movie. Yeah, I watch it right on the thirtieth at midnight, and I'm just like, thirty mm, first. There we go. Boom. Oliver and Company, right on Blu-ray. That's right. I have it on Blu-ray. What's up? My like my troll too. Yeah. No, I, I don't own the CD. I have another way to have it Blu-ray, but we won't talk about oh, that. Yes, yes. Because I'm a good Samaritan and That's I love right. America. Um. But no. Yeah. I just I. 
Oliver and Company. I can't even get it. I don't know why they produced it. I mean, if they if they advertised it as like a kids movie or like maybe throwing it out there as like some kind of like witty like struggle for a cat in a big city or something like that, that would have been cool. <coughs> don't put the horror label on it. That's just Disney. If you're watching, no, no, no. And I'm gonna hit you with a rolled up newspaper next time, right on the nose. Anyway, moving on. I'm, now, I'm frustrated. Now, now, frustrated. Now, a little disclaimer here. We don't honestly think Disney was going to make this a horror movie. Um, no, I just... I we're just, not that stupid here. We are that dumb. Yeah, we're, we're, mean, we are that dumb, but we're not that stupid. No, 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 no. There's a difference. But, but uh, yeah, we were... I wanted to go into... Uh, I wanted to go into our favorite bad horror movies, and uh, I think we're going to. We still have we still have 15 minutes before we break the two-hour barrier. Oh, so. goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. Yeah, so if you're still paying attention, and uh, you're, you're not angry at us for the movies we hate, or if you're not going, ugh, <laughs> Oliver and Company? This guy's an idiot. Yeah. Dude, this Josh dude? Adam, fire him. So, uh... Out of here. This is this is one of my favorites, and I'm probably going to go into way more than needed on the extras on this week. Dun, 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 um, dun, dun, dun. In fact, you're you're welcome to come join me. Oh yeah. Yes. Mm. In my intimate uh, office area. All night long, mm. Yeah. Celebrate. Right. Can't stop. Can't stop the dancing. Wow. That was a good moment. Yeah, we we went from Lionel Richie to uh, Daft Punk. Yeah, I can't help it. That was cool. That was a little mashup. I got to try. Yeah, got a little mix and match here. So uh, our top five uh, top bad horror movies that we absolutely love. Um, <sighs> I love them so much. This one, my number five, made your list somewhere. Yeah, it's, um, it's in there. Uh, I know so many people who are scared of it because of the subject matter. <laughs> but uh, my, How they my became like an object of horror. I'll never know. Yeah, my top. I don't either. My <laughs> top five, so number five, uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Because we love opera music. Now this movie, this movie. I don't think it was ever made to be incredibly scary. I don't think it was. I, I, think, it, it was, it was, I think it was cashing in on the fear that like some people had from it, which once again y- you've said not a scary horror. Movie. Oh, by the but way, it's, but yeah, still a way it. to like make people hate clowns. Yeah, like, just in general and oh. mimes by association. <laughs> you know what you did, mimes. Yes, but it had or not it. Killer clowns from outer space was campy fun. It yeah. was. It was. It was just. The 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 birth of the uh, '80s creature movie uh, on the same vein as Critters, or yeah. if you're my age and you remember the Munchies, I I, <laughs> I absolutely love you, uh, Ghoulies, that kind of Wants thing. To Killer have your babies. Killer clowns from outer space is fantastic. It's got it's got killer confetti. They 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 they, 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 they suck your they suck your life out of of cocoons made of cotton candy. Oh yeah. Delicious. Kind Their of spaceship is a is a is a circus tent. I mean, it's great. It, yeah. It's fantastic. And the the clowns are the clowns are animatronic. They have animatronic faces. They're oversized. They're 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 actually kind of creepy. But it's so much fun. And it's not a good movie. It's a no. fantastic movie. Um, my number four. Number four. That's one, two, three, four. This movie I mentioned. I think I've mentioned before. Uh, I think I mentioned last week that should have made my um, one of my top horror movies, but it is a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it cashes in on the 1980s American consumerism going crazy. Uh, it's a movie called The Stuff. Okay. Yes, The Stuff is a little known horror movie. Uh, I have no idea. People I know, horror people in my in my circle do know this movie, and uh, I grew up watching this movie over and over and over again in the 80s, and. It's it's about these people who find who find they you're you're wearing a Futurama shirt. Okay. You know the episode of Futurama, the uh where they make where they find the poplars? Yeah, I love poplars. Where where they just start eating out of this 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 hole yeah, in the ground. Just like crunchies. It's just like that. Fried except it, except instead of instead of instead of fried shrimp, it's uh it's yogurt. Oh. That's... They find this yogurt. It's the most delicious yogurt and they <laughs> they, they, they manufacture it into like the best ice cream in the world. And what it does is it turns them into mindless zombies. Oh, I mean. And it's obviously. taking over the world. I just, I love that, I mean, I could understand Pavlers because they were supposed to be fried chicken. This Futurama's a great show. But I, I can't understand a movie where yogurt, something that can literally just turn rotten in a matter of like minutes, days, give or take the humidity. And you're just like, yeah, but just scoop that up and put that in my mouth. But I'm saying the same like, thing with the populars. Uh, populars. Who would any, eat anything out of a hole in the ground? If you're hungry enough, man, it looks like fried chicken. That's true. <laughs> I love chicken. That's true. So there, there's that. By all of this, you can tell that I love chicken. Uh, my number three. 
My number, number three, three favorite bad horror movie that I love is the 1986 Halloween classic Trick or Treat. <clears throat> now, if you haven't seen this movie and you're a, and you're a heavy metal fan, you're missing out because it it's got it's actually got Ozzy Osbourne in the movie really? who plays a priest. Does he? Does he? Does he eat the bat? No, no. Does he plays. He... he plays a moral priest. Does, wait, wait. So does he? Does he bless you with his penis? No. Does he? Does he yell Sharon? No. Is he? Is he on a crazy train? But no. This this movie Ooh, is. About, sounds like it sucks. This movie is about this kid who 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 is the fan of this this um this this heavy metal singer. Okay. Who named Ozzy Osbourne? Who's no, also a priest? No, not at all. It has nothing to do with Ozzy Osbourne in the movie. What the hell. I think I, I think Gene Simmons is in it too. I can't remember. Guys, remember? Remind me. It's been quite a while. In the extras, um, just let us know before the extras. Um, but uh, what the hell. But. He finds this record of his favorite band that that shouldn't exist, okay. because the record the record uh, makes him makes him conjure evil spells and stuff. Okay, it's a fantastic movie. I mean, it really is. It's 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 terrible in in great way. The soundtrack is by this band Fastway. If you have no idea who the band Fastway is, you do know them as Flogging Molly. <laughs> they did grow up one of these days and make yeah. music. Yeah, it is nothing like Flogging Molly. It is it is a hair metal band. Uh, the soundtrack is fantastic if you like that stuff. <laughs> Trick or Treat, 1986, has nothing to do with the new Trick or Treat, which I love, by the way. Check out the new Trick. If you like anthology movies, check out the new Trick or Treat. Um, I believe it's I believe it's a uh, Chiller or no Fear Net. Um, is doing the is doing like the, TBS does the twenty four hours of Christmas yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, they do. Fearnet is doing twenty four hours of trick or treat on um on Halloween night, which has mm. nothing to do with the movie I'm talking about because mm. it's not a bad movie. So moving on to number two. Number two. Number two is considered the worst in its series. Uh, it's one of my absolute favorites. The song the song in the movie plays as our uh, as our our ending to uh, uh yeah. Nerdoween. It Nerdoween. is Halloween three. Not Halloween three, at your, at your number two. Halloween three. Halloween three. Halloween three. Not the number two. Not the number two. Halloween three. And the two. No two. Okay. It. Uh, Why? It's it has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Okay. It's all about the masks. Okay. It's campy. It's horror. It's fun. It's got uh, uh, nothing. Nothing really in it that that's exciting to watch. But no, not really. But it's really underrated. It's a ter- <laughs> it's a terrible movie. This is, this is it's a- you going, hey guys, that still watch the show after two hours. Yeah, watch Halloween three. It's a terrible movie Let's that uh, that I love to watch. <laughs> but let's move on to number one. Number one. Number one for Adam. My favorite mm. bad horror movie, and it was purposely made bad. Yeah, is uh, Return of the Living Dead. That's right. He said it. It's a parody of of the Night of Living Dead. In fact, they yeah. even they even reference Night of Living Dead in this movie. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you like zombie movies, if you're passionate about zombie movies, mm. don't watch this movie. Oh, hold on. If you have a sense of humor, if you if you have to watch everything related to zombies, then go see that movie. If you have a sense of humor, you like tongue in cheek, and you want to laugh at something, Return to the Living Dead Part One. It is a movie. Is 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 a great film. It really is. It's got it's got the it's got who. Yeah, I taught you the space bar thing. You're using that constantly now. I like that. Yeah, I'm touching it like crazy. Uh, Return of the Living Dead Part One has running zombies. It has shambling zombies. It has monkeys. Yeah, oh, it has it has a half dog. <laughs> yes, it does. I love the half dog. <laughs> It's oh, it's got so yeah. much to it. It's got it's got the it's got the the hot uh, naked punk rock zombie. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. This you want to see that? Mohawk this this all. movie. It's got the, it's got the my one of my favorite lines in all of horror movies. The send more cops said by a zombie, so they could feed on more uh, flesh. That's good. This That's is good. a great film. The second one. It's a movie. Yeah, it's what do you want to say? This Return of the Living to build, to Return of the Living Dead Two exists. It is is a thing. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's it for my top five bad horror movies that I love. Top uh, five bad horror movies. How about you? Uh, for me, um, well, 
I actually, I, I won't go into a top five. I mean, we're running low on time, but I will do, I'll do like a top three. We'll do a top three for me in no particular order. Josh's top three. Josh's top three, because why not? Um, in the, in the list, we've already said Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I love it. I think it's a great horror-esque movie. It's kind of like a It's thrill. a party movie. It's a party movie. It's kind of like, it's, you can sit down with your friends, kind of just have it on in the background. People laugh about it. People. You can riff like, on it. Yeah, you can kind of, you just have fun with it. And it's it's a good thing to do. Um, following that, a uh, movie that I, I love, but I also hate with a passion, um, is, and I'm going to say it, and it's kind of like, it freaks me out, because it, it's a movie that <coughs> does scare me because of a fear and a phobia, but it's not actually like a good movie, it's kind of goofy, it is a, a movie called Eight-Legged Freaks. Oh, that movie's hilarious, I love it. It's, it's hilarious, and it's, it's scary to me, and still makes the horror genre, because I freaking hate spiders. And I have an irrational fear for things that are smaller than the size of a quarter that can still kill me with poison. I love um, that you mentioned that because A-Legged Freaks is a great homage to the 1950s, like, really, like the super, monster super monster, you know, yeah. science movies. It really is. It's like a, it's a, it's an homage to like, like the old, like, uh, like even the Godzilla flicks of right. time. Like it's a giant lizard. That's all it is. But it's still freaking terrifying because it's destroying Tokyo. Mothra's coming in. But yeah, A-Legged Freaks, when the spiders are getting hatched, they're getting born under the city. It freaks me the freaking hell out. Because it's just frightening. It's giant spiders that are like eating cars and like shooting things. And like, it's, it's like, it's how you really <coughs> need to think about, even in comic sense, if you're looking at Spider Man, Spider Man is a spider that has all the proportions of if he was his size. So you look at it in that eight legged freeze movie and you're like, holy crap, that's amazing. Like, that spider's like ripping off a part of a mountain and just throwing it at somebody. And you forget that, yeah, their string can do that and they're really that strong and they can lift that and they have Ann Hall and they're just crazy. Like, they're ready to go. Um, so, eight legged freaks is definitely on my top three at least. And um, also in my top three, uh, final things out, and it's kind of another sci-fi movie, uh, Tremors. I love Tremors. I love, it, love, love Tremors. It's a sci-fi action. An, it's another. It's another monster. Movie. It's another monster movie. This is I great. Gotta, I got to throw it in there. Like, and, and my top three are monster movies. It's 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 a swarm of clowns, a swarm <laughs> of spiders, and a swarm and of worms, evil tentacle worm things. Earthworms, yeah, maybe giant worms, uh, but not yeah. not slither worms. By the way, Slither is another fantastic movie. Another good movie. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it, Tremors makes it on my list. It's a movie that I actually know friends that have like the collector's anniversary set. That guy, I have, the, I have at home. I have the first movie poster. So. Oh my goodness, Tremors is is a movie that I think nerds everywhere need to at least see one of the Tremors movies to kind of appreciate what it is. And the series, I have the series. Too. The, yeah, the series is great. It's just it's it's a thing that has been produced and gone through and it did start <coughs> out if you can remember it the first Tremors was advertised as a horror movie yeah they, like, it was trying to be taken serious it was it, still a it, fun movie it, it was really still was. it was still a well made movie it wasn't as scary as they were advertising oh, no, it no not but, at all and it, but it, yeah, that's what it brought to horror but it was well made yes it was beautifully made it made you kind of care about the characters just a touch and really made you go like holy crap that would suck like you're kind of like it's just like walking around and this <laughs> earthworm kills you and you're like Ah, oh, that's a thing. Yeah, and they can okay. feel your vibration. You, you, yeah, couldn't, you couldn't couldn't walk anywhere. Yeah. yeah, it was once again uh, like I've been saying all night. It's it's a movie that brings you to the point of come at me, bro. I'm I'm a big bad monster, and I don't care if you have a missile launcher or if you hate me or anything like that. And it makes it makes it on my top three. And I just I I want to go out on that note. I feel like that's a good that's like a, a good thing one. to end it on is mentioning tremors. I did it. Well, mom, that uh... <laughs> Adam. Oh. oh, that's right. He's he's calling everyone out. <clears throat> so that that uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for shortening that because we're we're hitting our we're hitting over our two hour here. No problem. Mark. And thank you for everyone who is actually sticking through this live stream. We're tired. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. My, I'm sure you are too. My muscle my muscles are hurting. So, um, because he's flexing so much. From that's right. His accident gave him superhuman abilities. He's no longer Adam. He is Super Adam Corfo. I can say your last name correctly. You think the car accident you, is your friend. You think last <laughs> names are your friend. <laughs> but I was born with the last name. <laughs> so so that's so, uh, uh that's that's episode two of uh of Nerdo Ween. It's uh, um, two of four? Two of three. three. We next week next week is gonna be our Nerdo Ween finale. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go back to our regular regularly scheduled uh nerdisms. Nerd yes. So uh let us know. Let us know what you thought of the show. If you um, like the two hour thing. That's right. Uh Adam's in charge of everything now. At That's least right. tonight I am. Nolan, if you're watching this, you left keys here. What are you doing? <laughs> but anyway, um, let us know what you want to see in the in the finale of uh, Nerdorama. Or yeah. not Nerdorama, Nerdoween. Nerdoween. Yeah, don't, we, don't we almost ended that. Yet. 
Uh, yeah, um, let us know in the fa- finale. Send us tweets. That's right. I only got six followers on Twitter. Nerd. Or it's at nerd underscore O-Rama. Make a Twitter just to follow us because we... That's we'll right. Do, if you will follow us, we will do cool tweets. That's we'll right. when the extras come out. Oh, by we'll the way, you. by the way, we do have a contest starting. Contest. Um, If you do not follow us on Facebook or Twitter, you do you not suck. know about the contest. Right. We are having a contest. We are becoming more multimedia, as you noticed, with our videos and our, yes. uh, and our pictures. We, mm. uh, we want you to make commercials. Not like, real commercials. We want like, you to make fake commercials. Like ShamWow? <laughs> That's a fake commercial, right? Fake commercial for fake products. Oh, you can actually buy ShamWow? That's sweet. Yes. Um, just went to jail for, for we, want, we want your ideas for commercials. We want, we, want, we want as much as you can write out about the commercial, or as little, or we will take liberties with it. Um, <laughs> please, please, act it out. please email us your it. ideas at uh, nerdoramafl at gmail.com. And uh, put uh, ad contest in the uh, subject. And remember, kids, there are no stupid ideas, just stupid people. That's right. The so winner, anyway. the winner or winners, depending on how cool the contest goes. If you do your own video, I will love you. Oh no, I want to. That's not what we're doing. Oh, we're not. No, uh, no. If you do, you do your your own video. Please link it to us and give us permission to use it. Um, I think it's gonna be ridiculous. The winner or winners will be uh, featured as a commercial on Nerdorama. Uh, you will get full credit for it, mm-hmm. and you will be loved forever. Maybe even a uh, guest spot uh, on the show. Mm-hmm. So please mm-hmm. uh, get those entries in. Mm-hmm. Any questions? Let us know. Uh, follow us on Facebook at Nerdorama FL. And follow us on Twitter on nerd underscore O-Rama at Twitter. That's right. So, um, also on our Ustream and on nerdcoreradio.com. I would like to, uh, once again to thank our sponsor, uh, uh, Anime Fix. Thanks, uh, guys. It's kind of funny that they, uh, that they sponsor us, knowing what the show it really is. But it's, uh, it's Bobby, guys. Bobby the, uh, the, the owner, is a really cool guy. Uh, he know he's very knowledgeable in his anime. In fact, maybe next week we will have a, like a horror anime uh, section. How scary it is. When young schoolgirls are persecuted unmercifully by tentacle monsters. Tentacles. But yeah, we do need to talk right? more anime because I am a big anime fan, and we we talk a lot a lot about movies and stuff, and hey. we we want to we want to branch out. We want to be the full nerd thing. We, so give us your questions and comments. We'll we will, we will consider them and and cast them aside. No, we'll we will like, we will ah, idiot. We will consider Steal them it. and add to them, and uh, we want to know what you think about the show. We want to know what you want to see, what you want to hear, what you want to feel from Nerdorama. Should so, we get matching purple leather uniforms? Um, Eddie Murphy, anybody? Yeah, we should. I know. I'm trying to tell him to do that. You know. You know you want to. I love purple. I see. Yeah. We're halfway there, and just leather. <laughs> <laughs> but let oh, us let I'm, us know. I'm dying here. Let yes. us know what you want to see, kids. I um, keep wasting your time. Uh, right. Check also check us check out all of our channel on YouTube. If you miss the show, if you miss the show, you shouldn't you you'll be hearing this going. Oh, I missed the show. It's on YouTube. But uh, <laughs> we do have we do have uh, a thing called Nerdorama Extra where we do do our uh, own extra do? videos online. We do do. Um, so give us a give us a give us a follow. Give us a follow. Give us a follow. That's right. Just, Be a follower. Yeah, we Please. want. We we we're doing the show for you. We want you to. We want you to have a good time. So uh, and our show can't stop without your ten dollar donation. So donate now. No, oh. Kenny, please don't do that. We won't <laughs> yeah. know what to do with your money. We'll be like, I guess we buy Taco Bell with this. I, guess, I don't. I don't know. Mm, Taco Bell. That sounds really good right now. But yeah, I I need a new car and uh, <laughs> <laughs> every little penny helps. Uh, please. We need the turbo lasers now. Once again, my name is my name is Adam. If you don't know that by now, then you you're probably not watching the show. Uh, that's Josh. Hey guys. And uh, we will see you next week for the conclusion of Nerdoween. So uh, that's all. And uh, have a uh, wonderful time. It's a um, wonderful day. He's we... trying to stall while he works out how this computer works. Yeah, I Pay am. Pay no attention to, to stall. the man behind the monitor. He is merely a figment of your imagination. Once again, we are uh, we are we are self producing ourselves. So self producing ourselves. Why why would we self produce ourselves? It's ridiculous in this city. Take it, Josh. What? What do you mean we're taking it? All right. Okay. So I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna stall while we find the ending. All right, kids. It's just me and you now. Look over here. Don't look over there. Look over here. Not over there. Ha! I found it. Okay. We're good. So see we, how you didn't look over there? We don't have to stall, so... Uh, don't worry about it. We'll see you next week on Nerdorama. Bye, kids!
It's almost time, kids. The clock is ticking. Be in front of your TV sets for the horathon. And remember the big giveaway at nine. Don't miss it. And don't forget to wear your masks. The clock is ticking. It's almost time.